Hello everyone and welcome to the QT episode number eight. What was that like? Like that's, you're that, pausing, you're going like. How is it eight? That, that was that was me playing music. Like, it. Hi music. everyone, we were not discussing and drawing penises on the minimap. We've never done that. Nope. It I wasn't think, me. Yeah, we figured we'd get it out of the way before the start of the show. It actually, it actually, it actually wasn't me. So I'm, it know. wasn't me either. No one's gonna I believe that. Anything. Yeah, but yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> me. But in spirit, you know. Like... I... You re you really wanted to though. <laughs> I was too busy running the intro. Yeah. <laughs> And speaking of intros, hello everyone and welcome to uh, the QT, episode number 8. Uh, it's good to be back again, especially seeing as we no longer have a Friday show. Yes, that is right. Uh, Dragon Riders Season 2 has finished. We now have yes. both Dragon Riders Season 1 and Season 2 uh, completely out and there to be viewed as and when you so desire. So, you know, go get that look if you get a chance. Um, intro stuff. You should do it. With the intro? I'm trying. <laughs> but oh no, I My brain's not working with me very well. No, I meant <laughs> Sheepy hasn't slept in like three days, so I've we're going to help I, him along. I've slept in three days. I have, I woke up extremely early this morning because I went to sleep extremely early mm. last night. Mm. I may have wake, woken up a couple of times, and at some point I was just like, hey, I'm not getting back to sleep. Cool. Anyway. Um, Man, I know that feeling. It, it's fine. I, I'm, I, I, I function very well on low sleep. Um, as advertised by this. Yeah. <laughs> as, as, you, as you can see by my floundering with the intro. Uh, so uh, this is The Wonder Again. Uh, we do TTRPG stuff. I do TTRPG stuff. We do. Um, I'm fixing my camera very slightly for a second. Sheepy there. tries to do TP, TTRPG stuff, and then he has players who get in the way. Yes. Mm. If only I didn't have these darn players in my way all the time, it would <laughs> yeah. be fine. It'd just be me here sitting, Pesky kids. reading my <laughs> novel out loud. <laughs> just, yeah, Sheepy just starts writing a novel. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, The Wandering Inn has things like a Discord, like a Twitter. If you want to get notified, you can go check them out there. Uh, disc uh, the Discord is especially great for, I don't know, looking at threads that are there, <laughs> or t talking with other people, and, you know, I'd, I'd have a, we don't really have enough, um, uh, uh, what's it called, um, like, fan art or anything for me to have a channel dedicated to it. We occasionally get a piece drawn here or there, um, very often it's Void Smoker, and very often it's fucking beautiful. Um, Void Smoker's a master. Yeah. Um, two two things I consider myself very lucky to have are uh, void, occasional Void Smoker fan art and occasional um, Mr. Matt comments in the YouTube uh, thing. <laughs> Just go, going to the YouTube videos and reading I the read, Mr. Matt. I read that comment every week. Every week I go and I read the Mr. Matt comment. Absolutely. I, I say it every now and then. I feel extremely blessed to have someone who goes into such depth and detail uh, talking about each episode. Um, like, you know, it, it's awesome when when anyone comments anything, you know, like, oh, I enjoyed this. It's like, oh, good, someone enjoyed this. But when you, re when you read Mr. Bat's comments, you're just like, you know, he starts it off with, I don't have too much to say today. And then, and then it's, it's like, like, eight, it's like paragraphs. Eight, eight paragraphs, like thick paragraphs. You're just like, oh, what happens when you do have a lot to say? And I, I can answer that too. Um, sometimes it's two comments full oh. of paragraphs. I've had a few oh. of those here and there. Um, I, endeav I endeavor to do something worthy of uh, requiring two whole comments. I think we'll Part get there. Same. Um, so, yes. Uh, uh, with the... What the fuck was I talking about? Intro. Intro. Discord. Discord. Uh, Discord. There we go. Discord YouTube. Uh, yeah, if you want to watch the videos, uh, the other series of things, we've got quite a few now. Uh, you can go check out the, the YouTube. And um, if you want to support the channel, and not just support the channel, but essentially guarantee that you'll get more shows, 
um go to the patreon take a look at it take a look at the options there pledge uh some money a month uh i think the minimum is like three dollars which is better than a twitch subscription for me uh give it a consider and you know take your time but if you'd like the more people even if it's just three dollars a month the more people on the patreon uh the more i'm able to pay my cost currently the monday cost is covered which is why we have a permanent monday slot running and we're on our way towards a friday slot as well the monday slot as you can probably tell is fairly slow burn rp it, you know like we we take our time we enjoy ourselves we go in deep uh the friday slot is a bit more experimental which is why you saw dragon riders on there because you have got you've got a cast playing two different characters and me fucking around with the overlay like turning on and off the uh the the different overlays for the dragon and for the dragon riders um which wasn't as difficult as i thought it was once once i got into it so there's that i have a few other ideas for some experimental type shows and things and i also want to bring in new uh new gms or other gms who want to try something experimental into the friday show so the sooner we get that all funded and we can pay the cost for that uh the more the quicker it's going to become a solid every you know a solid every show every time words anyway patron there you go that's the thing okay so we don't exist without that patreon my dudes True. I mean, I mean, you're right. I just disappear into the ether. We just ether. blink. Yeah, if you don't yep. support it, I have to pay the take care of my spiders. I have to pay the upkeep on all of their souls. Um, if yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, they're in it's jars like one of those. Uh, it's like the, them. It's like the Doctor Who episode when they're in the giant library and people get uploaded. If you stop <gasps> looking at the kids, they disappear. Oh, that episode's so creepy. Never seen a Doctor Doctor Who episode. Wow, you're a bad British person. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm a very bad British person, a to be honest. Bad British. Person. No, it's I'm fair, sorry, but like, that's that's accurate. Yeah, it's accurate. <laughs> so just like a good person in general, then. Yeah. Uh, come on, come on now, come on, <laughs> come on, come on. It's I, like Chrissy P says, good, not great. Mm, mm. <laughs> good person. Not good. I, I think I think at this point the UK and especially especially England in general could be described as mid. <laughs> I'm a bad Describe, American. I feel you. Describing an entire country as mid is just I don't know why. That's the best funny. thing is, like I'm pretty sure lots of people would actually agree with that. Yeah. Lots of British people. I think lots of British people would agree with that, yeah. Like, ask Josh at midnight when you're recording, and <laughs> it's gonna be like, yeah, yeah, very mid. Yeah. Wow. Um, Self-deprecation begins. I mean, I am British. <laughs> then you're a good Brit. It's what we do. That's the mold. Speaking of self-deprecation, why don't we play this game that we're all, you know... Oh, like, yeah, yeah, let's... Um, I'm rewriting my notes. <laughs> that's probably a possibility. Uh, so, last uh, last week, uh, we had a... Oh, we had a few interesting instances. Uh, we had uh, the whole group went to speak to um, uh, Mr. Ashford. Mm -hmm. uh, and discussed, you know, well, they didn't really discuss what happened with Puka particularly. Just basically said, yeah, it's sorted. George, George has it. Um, and then he gave them their next assignment, which was to head to the church near uh, where George is, um, in the slightly less uh, uh, affluent area of town. Um, to essentially go and meet a friend of his, an agent of his, someone who works for him. I'm kind of unclear, I guess. Uh, and find out what the hell is going on at the church, as there seems to be something going on there, and he hasn't had time to investigate it. Um, I can't remember who mentioned it. I think it was George mentioned the cave, uh, the mines out. Yep. Um, the poker warned me not to go to the caves, and I kind of briefly tried to explain the bread milk thing. And uh, Ashford said he wasn't aware of anything dangerous to the caves, but that he would be checking that out. Yes, he said he would go check it out. And uh, we'll never see him again. Never see him <laughs> again. He's uh, hey, no debt. He's just death dust in the wind. 
Yeah, I wouldn't um, be sad. You wouldn't be sad, or Tori wouldn't be sad, or both? I mean, we are of the same, oh, we're of a similar sad. mind oh. on this one. <laughs> But That's yes, Tori fun. is what I meant. Yeah. I would do the like little anime like chuckle like, huh, good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh George did have a weird night as well. There was a strange dream that kind of dissipated into the strange nowhere place where dreams go but left her with a bit of a grumpy mood for the day uh tori also fixed the the problem she caused which good job tori um Thank and you. essentially rescinded the warning to the impulse uh impulse impulsed the the c c compulsed Com I yeah know. thank you yeah compulsed uh a uh, warning that she gave to Will, basically saying, you know, look out, look out for George, be wary of George. So that's the great thing about mind control is you can always fix it with more mind control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that never goes wrong. Yeah. Also, just Seems just to be add to my dream part, the George dream part. I also yeah. had a really creepy gray fleckery smoke around me that Puka mm -hmm. was like scared of. Allegedly, the same shit that's around the librarian, or the librarian's puking out or something. Yeah, uh, not really so, puking out, but yeah, and seeping out of them or something like that. Also, what we saw at the end of last episode, as the camera drew out and we saw uh, little parts of the city start to. <laughs> so, how about we uh, rejoin everyone now? What I'm wondering is, because where we left off was after the meeting, and it was pretty much a given that you all would manage to sneak out for midnight, so you don't need to worry about sneaking out. What I'm wondering is, are you meeting at the church or are you meeting somewhere near the church and then well i mean we all have to together. sneak out individually or in george's case just leave their house uh mm. so like um, <laughs> not wrong <laughs> so i feel like that like near the church is probably wise ish yeah we did I, I we didn't discuss it, that we did not isn't discuss the church it. kind of on like a corner Yes. It is, yeah. I, I kind of figured we'd like gather around a street lamp or something. Yeah, it's on the classic, corner, a cr like classic kitty corner. Group. Exactly. The, bu the bus stop, you know? Uh huh. Like, yep. Uh, that's literally the sign. That's exactly what I pictured. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd probably be the first one just like sitting under the light because <laughs> I'm so close by. I don't know. George very, is like, I didn't, like, I didn't even want, I didn't even want to go home. I just sat I didn't here even go stop. home. <laughs> I just <laughs> sat here. Okay. Uh, Likely. In that case, uh, George, it's probably around 11.30, 11.40 p.m. Um, it is drifting in towards a, a kind of like late autumn, beginning towards winter at this point. So it's not cold, but it's brisk. Um, you can probably uh, do the thing that we all did as teenagers, blow fake smoke rings at some point. Um, and real smoke rings get the I was gonna say. Out. it's the it's, it's it's the 90s and you're it a bad is, kid get it the is the 90s out. and you are yeah. a bad kid <clears throat> i've got like winston's um. or something <laughs> new ports so uh what i will do is say um after a while one of you will turn up which one of you is there first? Do you think? I I think I might be first. Makes sense. So, um, Will, you are walking down the street, probably a little quickly and a little nervously. Yeah. You don't come to this part of town very much. There's never really much of a need to, unless you want to get nope. drunk. Um, and you see George kind of, um, what's the word? Uh, yeah, doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I think it's... Will might be skulking, skulking a little bit because he's not used to being out like at this hour and stuff. Is he like running from shadow to shadow? Like yeah, you know, a little trying... bit like that. Is he yeah. like on the lookout for for the police who clearly are on the lookout for people breaking their parents' curfew? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but you you get to you get to George and uh, George like I'm not going to require a role for this I don't think uh, I don't particularly unless you feel like he's actually being stealthy as opposed to just trying to be stealthy. Um, oh no, he's shit at it. Yeah, he's okay. absolute rubbish. <laughs> but uh, he, he is trying. Uh, George, you see him approaching, and he gets to you first one here, um, aside from yourself. Sup. How'd you oh. get out? I, 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 I think I might have overdone it. D done it? I, I think I might have overdone it. I, I climbed out the window. You, you okay? And, and then you see there's like a, a, a like the, the bottom of his pants has like a, a little ripped piece. And he's like, I, I, I hope she doesn't notice that. <laughs> Are you any I... good at sewing? <laughs> no. Uh, good job. Really? I'm you think impressed? so? Well, honest, I got here I anyway. You were gonna come. Well, I'm here. Just as a very slight note, there are a couple of people now and then walking past. A, they pay you no attention, and B, there aren't that many. It's getting close to midnight, and the majority of this area, either people are in bars, or people have already gone home and are kind of vegging out. It like Quail Town doesn't have a banging nightlife. And, yeah. Uh, it kind of like a lot of towns. It kind of shuts down around about. We don't. We don't hear a thumping bass line coming <laughs> no, from nearby. No. It, like, it's like the occasional like bottle party in the church. The like there <laughs> there are occasional house parties. You know, like as with any place that has some form of teenager around. Um, but the bars around here, not that any of you really been in them. I imagine if Tori goes out at all for that type of uh, shenanigans, it'd be to the city. And I imagine if George does, it would be just to partake in the same things the adults do, which is essentially fairly low music, really smoky, dingy bar with bad lighting, and just hope that no one looks at you or tries to talk to you so you can have a beer. Yeah. Um super interesting um <laughs> the people are probably <laughs> no one ends up in a place like that for no reason true uh who turns up next I, <laughs> it's you or me yeah i don't so. have like i don't really have a preference um so I'll just say I uh, come by uh, after that. Um, uh, imagining it to be um, a situation where at home, coincidentally, like Cecilia was probably freaking out about like all the way home about how the hell she would be able to get out of the house this late yeah. without it being a problem, without her having to also climb through a window and stuff and like break the rules like that. And she just like got sweats all over when even having to think about that so i think she like was over analyzing all of that up mm. until she came home and she was like shit i'm in my driveway and then like went inside without a plan and found out that only her dad was home that evening yeah. um and she um told him that she had a uh study sleepover with friends <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so she uh, she went off to go and do that, and yeah, he... yeah, and, and just just because it was only her dad um, who was there, she told him that, um, and so she, I, I imagine that then she just managed to get out uh, with a a bad feeling on her mind about having to tell that to her dad and it still not being true, um, yeah. but at least she didn't have to climb through a window or stuff like that. 
Yeah, no, that would work very, very well on, <laughs> on Dad there. Um, he wouldn't <laughs> ask any follow-up questions, and he'd just be like, yeah, that's that's what kids do. I did that when I was a kid, you know, kind of thing. Yep. So sad. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, she would uh, arrive and um, imagine that she would come from the side of, like, where George and Will are standing uh, already. Um... Why, why are you guys waiting here, around the, uh, corner? What? Uh, you walk quiet? <laughs> That's um, pretty easy, I think. And why, I why are you I figured it was waiting? best to wait under a light. Oh. <laughs> because you didn't want to be seen? Because when I got here, no one was here. I don't know. It seemed... A lot more sketch to stand in the darkness near a church. It, it, it was easy to see you when I got here. I have to say. Thank you. I don't know. Did, did you want me to wait in the rectory? Uh, Give a sermon? I, no one. I'm sure no one would have asked questions if you just went inside. Shoot a little prayer or something and already. At midnight? It's I don't so know open. what kind of churches are in your part of town, but this is not. If they didn't lock she, that thing, she, like, there'd be pushes... people ODing all over the place. I imagine um, that it's the typical, like, we have a few bushes, coincidentally, that we can, like, peer through, like, open up like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, sure. And so she goes to the side, opens up those bushes, and then just, like, you see people still walking around there, because you said there were still people. And she's like, yeah, you're in there. Ob obviously, there's still people there. Uh, be my guest. Um... <laughs> Just for I'll a, wait for Tori. Just for a little extra um, details on the church. It's like just down the road a little bit from you, and you know, um, within, within like yeah, total easily visual. Like I assume we're like half a block up the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. far away at all. Okay. Um, it has a, a kind of like iron iron gates and like a kind of stone wall around it. Uh, and then the gates kind of lead into the grassy area around it and stone path leading up to it. You got like um, you got like stained glass windows uh, in the sides, kind of all around it and stuff like that. And then you got a couple of like kind of stone statue type things which are out the front, and it it looks old uh, as befitting the uh, more western, uh, sorry, eastern, northeastern, um, you know, kind of area. Of yeah, America. it probably has like a graveyard out front with those old gravestones that have like yeah. the skull and the crossbones like the old new england style yeah 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 uh just out of curiosity because someone here said that local their local church legit that midnight sermons um is it how out of place is it to be around the church and is it closed off uh normally it's pretty closed off um i would assume the priest probably lives upstairs somewhere in it but i mean no. unless they're having a midnight sermon no he doesn't okay it's not that big the, no it, it's it's reasonably large, but it, it's just a church. It's just like the kind I, of. I also think living clergy depends on like the religion, yeah. right? Like that's a very like specifically. Ca I assumed like, Catholic. Yeah, it was Catholic like cathedral esque. Yeah. yeah, and the 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 what uh, the thing about this one is like there aren't very many people who go to services, so invariably when when the priest is running, like a. a Sunday mass or something you got like five people in there six people in there so it's like super low energy and maintained and <laughs> not well attended is what so, you said. I was going to say those are the <laughs> those are the churches I'm used to because no one goes most, to church here most yeah. likely if you wanted to find the priest currently you could go to one of the nearby bars okay so you're telling me we're going to have to if you want to get inside we're going to have to break in <laughs> Yeah. Mm, the gate itself is un like open, well, not open, and but unlocked. I mean, we're doors? gonna have to we're gonna have to perform Maybe. trespassing, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Perform sure. That was my question. Trespassing like that. <laughs> that was my question. Yeah. All uh, right. I'll say as you as you like part the bush as well, and you like look out that you see uh, Tories walking down the street towards the the lights towards you. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, Tori did not bring her vehicle. She did not drive here. She uh, took a bus. 
I was gonna do the bus entry. Oh, but, a uh, bus at midnight. Yeah, the small towns you can get buses pretty late because yeah. it's like the only way some people can get around. Bitch, uh, if the church is experience. open, there is a bus. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, it probably, yeah, she's. It probably stops outside the bar down the road because you know. Yeah. That's like yeah, going so to the church. No one goes there. She's walking up, but she's she's dressed in like a black hoodie and jeans. It's like very not her oh, usual damn. uh vibe. Like you gotta be able to run and be, you know, co comfortable if you're gonna trespass, okay? Yeah. Amen. Um so uh yeah, she walks up and she she's like, Oh, everybody's already here. Um great. Hey, Welcome to the Streetland party. <sighs> yeah. Party. That's what I'll call this. I mean, you got all dressed up. She says, like, <laughs> Tori. clearly noticing Tori does not Tori. look like herself at all. Tori rolls her eyes and is like, listen, hopefully no one sees us. That's the whole point of this entire endeavor. You right. You guys ready? You want to like go in? I, we're apparently supposed to meet an attendant, but I have been in this part of town this late. I've never seen anyone around the church in my life at this, at this time ever, unless the the priest gets too drunk and can't drive home, in which case you'll find him out back asleep sometimes. But other than that. Okay. So I so... guess we just go over there and call out. I don't know. Well, let's try the gate first. I, I the gate should be open because there's a graveyard and that's like public, but the church, I don't know. I don't think calling out is the best idea if we, you know, <laughs> um, don't want to get caught. What about like a bird call? <laughs> why, why? Why would anyone respond to, <laughs> why would anyone respond to a bird call? Have you set up signals with this priest? So that's a weird thing, a bird at midnight. You might people that why is a bird awake at midnight? Questions. The sound you made kind of sounded like an owl though. So Thank you. Yeah, but I think I think what Tori means is that owls are awake at midnight. So it wouldn't be strange. What if we could just throw a glass to... bottle? That's a pretty frequent sound around here. Yeah, that catches attention. It would have been really smart to ask Come Ashford on. to put up a signal. <laughs> Let's just. Try Aren't we get... trying to get this guy's attention? Well, this guy, not everyone who's still walking around here occasionally. Just act drunk. <laughs> it would be fine. <laughs> or high. It's whatever. <laughs> well, you cool? You ready? You good? Yeah, that's good. Yep, okay, let's go. We go try the gate. I'm to not gonna act drunk or high. It's No, at, I just walk. <laughs> it, it's at this moment that Sheep he wishes he had a comedic, uh, sneaky music uh, sting to, to have <laughs> during this moment. You need, some, oh. you need some Pink Panther action. Yeah, like some oh. proper, some proper Pink Panther uh -huh. style music. Uh -huh. I, I didn't look that far ahead into possibilities, but... It's probably that painful awkwardness where people are trying not to look conspicuous. Yeah. Yeah, you and absolutely look, look like we can't even walk, right? You know? Yeah. yeah. That's feel, just constantly that... looking around and stuff. <laughs> like Yeah. Just so suspicious. And you um, can you can walk up to the gate and indeed open the gate and walk into the the kind of front yard, let's call it, quickly, of the church. Quickly. Kind of, there's like a. I'm guessing at least one of you looks left and right super suspiciously before you kind of open the gate and slip in. Oh yes. Yeah. At least okay. At least two of you do that. Then cool, cool. I like it. Tori, <laughs> Tori, Tori acts with confidence and no suspicion. Um. It, yeah. It, in front of you, you have some graves. You have a path leading up to the. Uh, uh, to the front door. Essentially, it's got like a little. Uh, jutting out in the front where you've got some kind of stone pillory things with the statues and then just a fairly large kind of wooden door inlaid. Are there any some... lights on? No, it doesn't look, look like it. But the, you've got enough light coming from the street lamps and stuff that uh, you can see here. 
what if what if the attendant is like one of those things that like what if the attendant is gonna come out of one of the crates like we saw previously oh what did what did that guy do to it just like punch it in the face I, I don't know he had a salt packet but it's not important right now the way I've always done anything like this is just act like you're supposed to be here how are we supposed we just... to act like we are supposed to be in the graveyard in a church at midnight well, as for I mean... teenagers who aren't gonna do drugs nobody else knows that's not what you're gonna do and then <laughs> I like George's reaction like we're not we're not doing drugs we're not, we're not. <laughs> I'm already high as fuck <laughs> she is not <laughs> too late I can't anymore it's the worst e even if, even if she tried to she is not no, uh, I, curse. I, I don't i don't know george where you, whether you've tried to drink alcohol or you know take I don't think anything. not yet i don't not think yet, so no. but just for when you do it is impossible yeah. yeah so um sick why don't we just try the door maybe it's open that's probably the least conspicuous thing to do, right? Rather than circling the building, peering through all the windows one at a time? Yeah, a little less. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sorry. And I'm going to walk up the stairs to the door yeah. and like look at everybody like, yeah? Like, should I knock? <laughs> Tori's just like, go ahead. Do it. It's a big, like, old wooden door kind of thing, or is it yeah. like a normal? It, it is? It's okay, a, then it's I'll... a big old wooden door, yeah. Probably do a fist, like, pop, pop on pop, it or pop, something pop. then. Uh, when you do, um, you hear George from behind you and the rest of you probably to the sides of you if you haven't walked up with George. A voice says, Cookie King. <laughs> and I look, I look around for the source of the voice. You, you hear We are not here doing drugs. <laughs> You 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 hear kind of like a um a, a kind of like heavy clunky sound, um and if you're looking, uh, the head of one of the statues like turns to look towards you. <laughs> Hello. Well, maybe they yeah. already oh. did drugs. A little freaked out. <laughs> Tori says. Uh, hi. Are you, uh, an attendant? My name is Dorox. Were you sent here by the man who has the glasses? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, Cecilia leans to the side a bit, too. Uh, assuming, yeah, George was the one who stepped forward, so Will, who's the only one else next to her and just like says like oh, she's so cool just <laughs> talking to a internally statue. she's freaking out right like there's this there's this she's internal got that surgeon yeah. calm <laughs> it's the internal like headspace where she's like holy fuck holy fuck holy fuck what the what the crap is this you know what yeah. i mean but like she's just like yeah we're we said by uh ashford yeah will's eyes are like <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> and, and the um, the the statue, which is kind of like this. Uh, um, I mean, it, it's not super creepy, you know, the traditional kind of gothic gargoyle, but it is a kind of gargoyle-looking type thing, same as the other one. Uh, kind of like turns very slightly. There's a bit of clunking, and it kind of like looks down to the the wings move very slightly, just kind of repositioning. And it says, Are you here to deal with the problem? The, uh... I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Sir, um, what, um, um, Jericho. statue, uh, uh, what problem? Uh, we've been seeing some lights inside. Around about midnight. In the church? 
uh, haven't been able to get inside to see what it is. So you you can't open the door? Mm, unable to fit. It's too big, you see. Oh, I mean, just open it. Uh, I could open the door, but people would know that I had opened the door. Is that bad? Are you not supposed to open the door? Technically speaking, we're not supposed to move. I How think do... people would look at <laughs> Tori looks at all the you. other gargoyles like, we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cecilia was like, what? she was going to ask, like, we, but. <laughs> There's, o there's only on there's only one other statue that's gargoyle. The rest uh, there's, there's there's a couple of angel type things and you know. Oh no! Don't, like, don't say like angel. Okay. And, um, but the, she didn't watch Doctor Who. Yeah, no, but I did. I did, so I can still get the. Don't worry. Shiver. They're not crying. Okay, good. Uh, no, I was gonna say I'm, I'm getting the uh, the uh, mask when he's freezing and he's trying not to move his lips. <laughs> You tell me you freeze. Uh, the, the, does it? Is that what it sounds like? Is it? Does it sounds like he's trying not to move his lips and like? Oh, it sounds like he can't. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That makes more sense. Well, yeah. thank you. I just point of clarification thing. So you just need us to figure out what's <clears throat> going on inside, then? Could be a problem. Oh, what? What is he saying? Could, could be a problem. It could be a problem. Problem. Yeah. So, we asked the guy with the glasses to come and look at it. Well, he sent us, so we're oh. here to look at it. Well, then you should go inside and take a look at it. Okay, and I'm gonna try the door. Yeah. If we need to get inside, the priest leaves the key under the mat. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> Yeah, that, that totally checks out. I'll look for the key. Grab it. Yeah. Um, is there anything we should know about in there? Uh, there's a light of some kind. I'm not sure what it is, but it is probably not natural. Okay. What makes you... What, what makes you say that? That's probably not natural. Uh, because all the lights are turned off, and the light moves. It moves. moves light. And no one could, like, get in without you noticing? Okay. Or uh, maybe if they went around the back. But I should notice them regardless. Did you find okay. a key, George? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm ready. I just, I don't... Alright. I, I, I guess have a... we just go in. I have a plan. Do we want to talk about what we're going to do here? Cause yeah, please. I please. Don't know God, please. Yes. So here's the plan. We're going to go in. I'm going to go first. And I'm going to call out that whatever, if something's hiding and it hears me, it'll have to come out. Because I'm going to tell it to. All oh, right? sick. Yes. Yes. And then... Just be ready to for whatever happens after that, okay? Uh, Cecilia, you're the dangerous one, and George. I'm sorry. Be ready for whatever. Happens. Be ready for whatever happens. It could be bad. It might be a conversation, but the last one was easy, and I'm sort of thinking this one might not be. It the chance doesn't work like that. <laughs> you know, people at people at because you no. People who gamble, you know, they always think that the next one is going to be bad because they've been having good things for so long. It doesn't work like that. Let's okay, hope it's so, a conversation. I hope it is too. But uh, if it isn't, just, you know, be ready. Will, maybe, like, be ready to look at whatever it is, you know, specifically, okay. like... Yeah, I can do that. Uh, uh, should I Should I do it now, uh, maybe? Just get ready, whatever you need to... Oh, okay. if, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back to her pretending that I can't move. Okay. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you. 
fine. Thanks. Go on for that. Good luck. I didn't get that. He's just gonna go back to not moving, and we can go about our business, okay? That seems good. That's better for all of us. When he said we, did he mean all of them? He's just gonna look back at the I graveyard like... Let's, let's not think about it. Let's not think about it. It's just better that way, I think. Okay. Okay. Are we uh, going in the front? Door, George. <laughs> Uh, you have the key, right? Yep. yep. Friend? It's, it's one of those long iron, you know, old, old school. Old, yeah, old school keys and locks. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Tori looks at George and is like, you know, open it, like, be. And also, George is just, just kind of standing in front of the door with the key, like, Tori I'm puts useless. A okay. Tori, Tori, puts a ha Tori puts a hand on your shoulder in this moment, while the key is in the door, and goes, don't fuck up, okay? Just, like, that would be great if you just weren't useless. Alright? Thanks. Does it work? No, I'm and not. suddenly I'm not, I know how to use not, a key. It's not, it's, not mind, it's not mind control. It's just her being like, the last I mean, time you did this, yeah. you freaked out. <laughs> it's just Tori being an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I put a question mark on the end of all of those you sentences. You did, you did. True, true. I put there a was question, a question mark yep. on the end of all of those sentences. Yeah. Is it, you, just yeah, don't you did. fuck up. Okay. <laughs> that fuck up, George okay? will, like, it, I assume because it's one of those big keys, big doors, it's a multiple, like, click, 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 kind yeah. of multiple yeah. turner. And then start yanking the and then whatever. Tor is going to adopt open. the uh, the Canadian question intonation, and everything she, goes up at the end. Just nah, she just imply a question mark. Just turns into a, she just turns into a valley girl. Everything is a <laughs> a pretty inflection. <laughs> <laughs> that way is not a command. I found a loophole. <laughs> <laughs> I have to talk like this for the rest of my life, but at least I Weirdly don't have to fitting. mind control people. <laughs> Unintentionally. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, you unlock the door and uh, it it, um, it opens up and you see inside, like, you've got a little bit of light coming through. The um, the stained glass window is actually distorted a little bit and changed the colours, so the light that does seep through is also kind of uh, greens and reds and purples and all that type of thing. But it's enough to see. You've got the pews on each side. You've got the aisle going up. There's a, um, there's like a kind of, uh, a fairly ornate, like, angel statue, uh, at the front, just kind of behind the podium. With, Great. With, like, um, it's one of those old school ones, which is, like, you know, the, the angel itself, um, has, like, a slightly broken off sword, you know, like, the, yeah. the tip, mm -hmm. the tip of it is kind of broken off. I and, see. Um... I'm gonna wave at it. Okay. And uh, I'm. Do you all walk in, or or are you just? I think it's like one of those tentative two we steps in and dies. looking around furiously. Like no, 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 whatever could be in here can see us, Tori. Or like you know, could see us maybe. Oh. Tori's gonna. Tori's moving like a captain. You know what okay. I mean? Like a like a like a popular. I'm oh, supposed yeah, nice. to be here attitude. It's the confidence. Um, she doesn't need to yeah. actually have skill, but inside, her confidence she's, would make us inside, lead her. Inside, she's just, she's just like totally freaking out. But yeah. the, the, the outer shell looks pretty good as usual. Um, the outer shell looks pretty good. Pretty good. In in that case, uh, does everyone else go in with her? Like you said, you guys stepped in and a couple of steps and like okay. Yeah, I'd be. I'd probably be right behind her because I don't want to be. I you know physical closeness in the dark church so yeah. once we're in the church uh yeah do, do we close the door behind us or no people at the back i i didn't i'll neatly close the door okay <sighs> and you uh, quietly close the door scary good music one <laughs> of <we're>, no <laughs> once we're in the church uh i think tori walks <laughs> up to like the end of the pews like the front at the front of like not the, the the like pulpit or whatever, but like the you know the pews. The the, the I'm, I'm trying to think of like what that would be, but yeah, uh, sort of center of the church. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
and like the uh, communion kneel bench kind of area kind of yeah. yeah um and just says out loud like loud enough that it probably echoes uh um she says i'm gonna give you one chance you can come out and talk to us or i'll make you come out Cecilia mutters beneath her breath very, very silently. Holy fuck, she just did that. Uh, <laughs> Sheepy, I'd like to... This is... This is uh, sorry. Manifest. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is absolutely in the voice that you've all heard before a hundred times where someone in her group has clearly done something that's pissed her off. You know what I mean? It's the, yeah. restra it's the restrained, uh, like, I am frustrated, but I am still very cool. Come uh, back here, Brittany, right now, or you're yeah, out of yeah. the group. <laughs> yeah. So, um, William. Yes. Me. What? What? Uh, what are we? What's on the menu today for the uh, for the I? Oh, the forth? the 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 uh, um, like the uh, the M town memory. championship for the chess, mm. or like the. It was it was a county because it was back in in the UK mm -hmm. and he lost because of uh, uh, he had forgotten the uh, il passeur when you can grab when you can take something in passing as it were yeah and he had forgotten about that and he, he lost the game because of it and he it was, he was beating himself up at, about that for like a couple of weeks afterwards. It's a more obscure rule, but it is something yeah. that if you're a chess player, you should always keep in mind. Yeah. And um, a small kind of in the silence of the church, you'll hear a very slight crackling, almost like embers of a fire and a very, very faint smell of like acrid smoke. Okay. Uh, and will your your eye starts to heat up and you can start to see uh through the lens of that uh the devil's eye as it starts to manifest and the scales come over and everything yeah uh what i'll give you immediately is you do see a kind of like light blue misty smoke type thing okay um currently it is uh mostly kind of concentrated around the back of the church uh yeah. behind the the dais the dais the dais in the ads um, part like the uh... yeah kind of kind of at the back there's a, a few like unlit candles and there's the statue yeah, yeah. and then but there are like very faint wisps of it kind of down the aisle and in between a couple of the uh in between a couple of the pews and that type of thing. Okay. So what I say to the group is, I think it's spread out a little bit. There's more of it over there, but it's all around us as well. And uh, Will starts. More of it? Uh, I, I, uh, Will points to the like w wispy bits that are out in among the pews and stuff, but mainly is as a, what well, most of it's up there. I think it's, uh, I don't think it's coalesced. That's, that's I have everything no I see. idea what you're saying, Will. Do you know what a gas is? Are you saying the thing we're going after is a fart? And, and Will looks over with like a dead serious red eye. <laughs> yes, George, it's a fart. And most of the thought is over there. Sick. Or he's waiting to see if this thing will appear at its own behest or if she's going to have to up the ante. It is the posture of like arms crossed, waiting impatiently for someone to do what she says. How, uh, long, how long do you give it? Just as a question. 10 seconds. Uh, what Will's going to say to uh, Tori, like lean in and whisper. You could tell it to uh, kind of gather itself up or coalesce and show itself, because uh, I can see it, but it's uh, all over the place. Assuming it can understand me. Yes, and then we'll Assuming go back to his place. To listen to us. 
Yep. She waits 10 seconds. Nothing happens. She says, All right. Show yourself. Uh, with with the power of her her supernatural ability behind it. Eyes Ooh. green. Smell of seawater. The usual. Yeah. <laughs> Seagulls. <It's... laughs> Just a couple of thumps the seagulls hit the <laughs> to stay off the windows outside. <laughs> I like the idea of someone with a, like a, a a tea mug to their ear going, I can hear the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens. Do I do I see any change at all? No. Um, just uh for for you as opposed to Will, because I'm not sure how much Will understands this. Yeah. Um, what you're seeing here is very similar to what you were seeing before. It is remnants or essence. It is trail. It is, it is not being. Okay, so it's it's like trailing the puka. It's it's just. Uh... You're seeing okay, so I... evidence of something that I see. has been here. It is not necessarily oh, okay. here. Okay, I misunderstood. I thought it was like a, a spread out being that was a, in, a, in a gaseous form. Okay, so uh, then I say, I don't think it's here. I think what I'm seeing is the trace, sort of, like with the puka. It's been in and around the pews, but mostly it's been up there. That's where most of the track, the traces are. Can you follow it? Does it lead off anywhere? Uh, does it lead off anywhere, or is it just? It seems to be a fairly like. Tra fa I can't say whether it's like traveled the same yeah, yeah. path all the time. But it doesn't go like in through a wall. It or doesn't something. go through walls. It doesn't. There's no like trail off the. Is there any trail towards the door, or like no. the the door towards the uh, rivery or anything in the back? No, it's just in this kind of. Does church this area. church? All right. Have a uh, confession, confessional. Yes. Is there anything over by the confessional? Kind of yes, uh, but it, it, there's no kind of trail going in or going out. It's just okay. nearby, like going past it. Yeah. I, uh, what Will says is, I. it's been pretty much all over the place. I don't see any ingress or egress points, but uh, we might want to check in there. Any points towards the confessional? I, I okay, I swear. I was going to say to God, but no, not to God. I swear there is a hidden latch behind there. I will. What kind of churches you've been hanging out in? Indiana and Jones at that, I'm going to walk up, I'm going to walk <laughs> yeah. towards the confessionals, yeah. and I want to light a match and see if I can look in the screen, see if I can see a silhouette or anything. Um, there's yeah. just, it's just two doors, right? You can just open each side and see. Yeah, it's got like a curtain yeah. thing. You see Will on the other side. <laughs> and there's, there's nothing in, inside it or, or anything. Yeah. Is there any trace in there from the thing? Like, no? Okay. Yep, nothing in here either. As they walk to the confessional, I will slowly start walking towards the dais and, like, the farthest edge. Um, whoa, farthest edge, Jesus. Um, the, <laughs> that was way back. Um, yeah. Where uh, Will said that he, like, it kind of coalesced a bit. I don't know. Yeah. I'm walking over there, dreading to if I see anything. My my knowledge of church layout and what they're called is very old, but I think the ads is like the place behind the altar up against mm -hmm. the back. Look at I, you I, being smart. Yeah, no, I, I, I also I I did preface I don't rem remember if this is correct. <laughs> um, I would say around about this time actually, uh. And I feel this is the most likely. But if any of you also have one of these, please do let me know. Most likely, Will has a digital watch. Uh, no, 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 he's, he's analog. Does anyone have a digital watch? I Will really definitely do. has an analog one. Yeah. George? George is probably the most likely. Yeah. In, that, in that case, George. Casio calculator watch. As you're both kind of like looking in, uh, your watch goes. Doo -doo -doo -doo. It's, oh. mid it's midnight. Ooh. And as, we're on time. As you hear that, the um, you hear of sound you heard a little bit earlier, uh, the grinding of stone on stone, 
as the angel's hand goes from holding the sword up and it moves and it moves until the sword is pointing down yeah and yeah, then cool. coming from the hand this like light white blue kind of liquid just drips down the blade and as it gets to the tip of the broken blade it stops and forms a droplet that grows and grows and grows and grows until finally the droplet falls off and suspends in the air uh, it appears to be it's easiest to see for Will because of his eye but for all of you it appears at best you can describe it to be like a liquid ball of blue white mm. um I think effervescence is the word kind of like it, it's very uh neon luminous uh mm -hmm. with some like very faint like flame blue white flame like licking around it <laughs> Tor Tori takes a couple of steps backward because uh she's not really sure what to do with this and goes like George uh George you can eat it I like what the you uh, would eat it um as a sidebar because i think Cecilia's the closest to this yeah oh god, yeah oh god. cecilia you hear a very very light kind of like murmuring humming which kind of goes like uh cecilia also she was walking towards this, like the statue-ish um, and so the moment it starts turning and doing all of that stuff, she also like takes a step back and she's like, I, I, I um, it's, it's murmuring, you guys, uh. Oh shit, she's talking to the blue thing. And I'm going to move a little bit closer to see if I can hear anything. And when you say. Very tentatively. <laughs> when you say, um, it's murmuring, it kind of like drops down a little bit and starts to bob towards you just kind of like bob bob towards bob. cecilia uh towards cecilia yeah what uh kind of, what what kind of aura thing am i getting because you you said will can see auras yeah so what, what am i getting is it like an evil pulsating red with the danger will robinson danger danger written on it or is it a, is it like oh it's a nice warm blue it's a, a kind of that same like light misty blue that you saw okay. that was around this area um cecilia do, do you do anything uh i was about to say i i will keep standing there for a moment but if it truly like gets closer and closer yeah. once it's like in arm's reach i'll start taking steps back equally okay and if it gets that close and if i have to start stepping back i'm like Anyone, any idea what to do with the light bulb? I, I don't... If it's talking, talk to it. It's not talking. It's murmuring. It's very ominous. Murmur back. I... <laughs> hey. <laughs> I just want to communicate. I don't know. How do we communicate with it? Is it alive? Is this a trap? Hey, can you stop? <laughs> um... We just want to talk. I'm going to move up to stand next to Cece as she's, like, okay. kind of moving away from it, I guess. And be like, Hel hello? Blue thing. Uh, as you start making that noise and trying to get its attention, it, you can't tell if it, if it like, moves or, like, just swivels or anything, but it stops for a second, like, for a beat, and then starts drifting towards you, like, bobbing and coming closer towards you instead of Cecilia. Oh, okay. Come, come with me. And I'm gonna like just start moving down the like you know I'm assuming you could move in a circle around this church eternally kind of. So I'm gonna start moving towards whatever the farthest corner, like the most. Put my back towards where I have the most area to move backwards forever, you know. Ah. Mm -hmm. And and like so I can talk to the group while it's following me. Like okay, apparently well, yeah, I got its attention. Hold, hold a second here. Okay, don't do that. Just um, die. At this point. Could you please roll me a face danger? Ooh, and yeah. you're going to have um, a minus three on this. It's dangerous. Um, 
roll 20 again. You gotta eat it, George. It's the only way. I open my mouth wide. <laughs> Come here. Okay, negative three face danger. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, oh. oh no, did I really die? Oh yeah. Um. So who are we getting on next week? <laughs> Since George will be dead, obviously. Your... I just wanted to help Cecilia. Shit. Your eyes and your mind as well um go a little bit fuzzy. Uh, it's you're you're not completely cut off exactly. I'd compare it a little bit to being a bit too high or something like that, maybe. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> so so familiar, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think I can figure it out. And uh. George, if you would please, could you give me the a couple of the more hopeless moments in George's life? Going back, I'll start you off a little bit. Um, even though you can't really remember it, you do now remember it with perfect clarity. The dream that you had. Oof with uh you and your sister replacing the face where you are essentially reliving snapshots of your childhood watching your mother yeah and both you you and your sister replace your mother's face and then it leads to the police lights and it leads to the open door and you remember that dream in its entirety and then the scene shifts and Kind of in a in the classic sepia um, black and white tone we see other snapshots from george's childhood and so it's a hard one okay um i would say one of the first what was the word you used like the most hopeless hopeless God, hopeless um i'd say the first time was probably when she was you know, old enough, cognizant enough to realize that her dad didn't just live in another city. He had started an entire family, yeah. a new one. He started over, you know, like when she was old enough, I don't know, probably like middle school age was when she finally started to kind of realize like, oh, he just started over and got a better version of what we were. And that's why he doesn't come around anymore. That's definitely. Which was probably also the first time he didn't make it to like a recital or, a, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I mean, I think it. It was probably like he had missed a few yeah. and now it had been like three weeks since I'd seen him. Mm. And it started instead of the excuses like the train wasn't on time or something. It was like one of the other kids had a game or yeah. one of the other kids had something or the new wife had something. And she was like, oh, I get oh. it. He started over. It was very possibly uh, the first time your mom didn't make up an excuse for him. And just said, he's just not coming. Yeah, that's harsh. Mm, that's rough, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then, like, not it's related to, but the next probably, like, a lot of her hopeless moments have to do with her, like, realizing how alone she kind of is. And, you know, not really, doesn't really have any sort of support structure or any kind of circle around her at all. And it was when her mom started picking up extra shifts and got a boyfriend at the same time and literally just stopped coming home. Yeah. And their fridge was empty and there was nothing and Alyssa was starving and she was like, oh shit. Yeah, like this is like, real, like there's nowhere to go. Deep lonely. Yeah, it, that deep aching sense of like you have to put a face on for your little sister but like you're dying inside. If I can, if I can uh, illustrate this a little bit. Absolutely. Um. The first time she had to shoplift something and like it probably went slightly wrong well it was uh, her sister's asthma meds she went and picked him up at the pharmacy and then went to the front to pay them and could not and she tried to get him out 
So it was like double shot to the gut. The 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 look on the pharmacist's face when they saw what you were doing and Yeah. The shame, the pity. Like they just that empty ass pity. And like because it's, you know, everything's local and walkable, they all know our situation. Like everybody knows everybody in that part of town. Yeah. Okay. Um all of the third. That's good. <laughs> all of that goes through kind of like and it, it comes back as raw as the first day that you experienced it, the first time. And you feel this kind of like pitying, angry, like like sensation kind of in your in your chest in your brain in in this kind of like dis disconnected nothingness around you uh and then your eyes focus a bit more and you see that the um the orb is now kind of shaking a, a little bit and just uh, just kind of like vibrating slightly in front of you uh, it dips a little bit, um, almost like a drop, and stops and keeps going. And then shoop, it flies into your chest and throws you back into the pews. And essentially, you okay. are... Uh, uh, you, you blank out. How anime is this landing though? Is this like through a pew, like the pew breaks, or it, like into like, the pews, yeah, like it knocks like, one over? Or it's something. like into like, the pews, one of the pews breaks, and she. Kind I, of I was like, gonna say, is it a push or is it a constant force when she goes through the pews all the way back? It, she doesn't go all the way back. She like breaks the first set of pews and then hits, like like a, hits like the throw. second and kind of bounce, bounces off them a little bit. Um, Tori's confidence is gone. She's like, shit, shit, <laughs> shit. Holy <laughs> fuck. Oop. George, George, are you okay? Hey. Is like, the runs, light runs gone? over to. The light is gone. Runs over to check George. Yeah. I think uh, we're both going there. Her, um, her palms are glowing bright white. And she has like a oh. shimmer, a, a kind of like, like, blue white outline around oh, her shit. oh okay uh, tori what does she... okay tori looks to will and says like can you is she hurt can you see anything yeah i like... was gonna say what does she look like to will does Same. she have a blue Same. orb thing in her now um so she has she has the the um the outline the um kind of like aura she had before when you checked her at the other graveyard Okay. But she also has like a blue shimmer that's like shimmering and kind of like it kind of like shines around her and then fades and then kind of flickers. It's not solid. Solid. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I, I well conveys that as best it can. <laughs> yeah. And... Tori, Tori tries to like shake her shoulder, like yeah. wake her up. There's like a kind of static kind of as you try and touch her like shoulder. Um, uh, she she uh, she doesn't feel there's it. a you there's a it. momentarily like there's a momentary like flinch obviously like yeah. ah shit like when you shock yourself yeah like static like, she's concerned for her oh. quote unquote friend you know yeah, and it yeah, goes yeah. goes like hey come on George wake up like I, I need you to wake up shit is she um I think at the other side um because Tori is just touching her right. Yeah. Uh, well, went to touch her, and then static shock kind of spark came off. Oh, when... she can't. So then she didn't. So I can't touch her. Like if I do it again, do I? Would you, like... like? Yes. She... Would you like to do it and ignore the um, the spark? Because it's gonna spark again when you touch her. But you can hold uh, on to her if you like. Yeah, I I think so. Like Tori wants to try and wake her up, right? Okay. Perfect. In that case. <laughs> Oh no. He's way too happy about that one. Yeah, that's a bad <laughs> sign for me. George. Yes. Um, you're in the darkness. Uh that that you you've been here before. You remember it vaguely. It's the void. Uh it's the void of nothingness. Oh, is this where I met Chef Jeff? Yes. <laughs> it, it, it it is where you meet Chef Jeff. 
yet again. <gasps> ah, ship jam! As he walks out of the darkness, kind of scratching his neck. Uh, he goes, hey, kid. I'm going to look down. Do I still have no feet? <laughs> you still have no feet. Oh, I have no feet. Am I dead? Did I die? Did I mess up? You, yeah, you messed up, kind of, but you're not dead. Do, do, do you get it back now? No, I'm, I'm retired. I'm, I'm out of here, you know. But you're right there. Yeah. She's going to reach out to him with the no hand. Oh. Um, what's going on? You got invaded. A, a bit like what happened, um, a bit like what happened when I met you and you inherited this. Except for oh, you can't, no. you can't inherit again. You can't, well, it, it's actually kind of more a possession, really, this one. Um, Possessions can be fun. <laughs> what do I do? Am I, I don't understand. What's happening? We're having a little bit of a disagreement with uh, an invasive, possessive entity currently. We? Yeah. Who is we? You and me. Oh. Just... What do we? Like a like a virus. Sort of. So, what's the penicillin for this virus? You have to get out of that negative headspace, that hopelessness where it feels like nothing's ever going to be okay. And at that, all those thoughts are probably still spinning and yeah, she'll snap yeah. back to they're, realize they're that's still of, happening. They're kind of like pressing in on your Don't mind. Don't think about how much your life sucks. Yeah. Don't think about how terrible everything is. So, you're telling me not to focus on my just basic existence. Do you have any suggestions for something else? Cheer up. Oh. Okay. Is it working? You you tell me. I'm gonna be honest here, Chef Jeff. I don't know how. I don't have feet or arms, and I don't know how to ch cheer up at nothing oh. in the dark. What's? Wait a sec. We just got an easy out. And he disappears. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and she'll, like, you know, with her disembodied nothing, just, like, reach out or, you know, try to run towards where he was or whatever and be like, yeah. what the fuck? Uh, and as you as you say what the fuck, you say it out loud as your eyes open. Um, at, in the same instant, uh, with Tori holding on to George's shoulder, um, all of you see the blue lights like coalesce towards the shoulder and shoot into Tori's arm and then up Tori. Um, Tori? Yeah? <laughs> hopelessness. Mmm, oh. hopelessness. Not as strong an emotion for Tori as it is for George. No. Um, Does she get knocked back like I did? Or is it just jump into her and she's just overwhelmed? The, kinda? the, the force like, of it is not the same. Okay. Lightning shock, stumble back. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of Tori having three memories and George having a plethora of memories to choose from. <laughs> How many would you like? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it rain some sadness. I mean, obviously Tori's <laughs> family is shitty but i wouldn't necessarily call it hopeless you know what i mean no but um for example the one i would illustrate that we've had already uh would be the dinner alone sitting by oh, yourself oh sure yeah and i was gonna say there are probably That's... some instances when she's younger where she loses like friends or like real uh, attachments for like superficial reasons and whether that's her own doing or other people's like it still feels terrible you know what I mean like those like 
elementary and middle school friendships that you just like end for for seemingly no reason. Yeah. Um you don't have class together anymore. What have you? Yeah. Um and uh I think Tori has like built up a wall about that, you know what I mean? Like that that whole like the idea of like friend abandonment is solved by making everybody your underling, yeah. right? Like um and I think that's probably like a hopeless feeling, you know, there's no way to build yourself back into uh, like legitimate friendships from minion uh, like mm. like sort of places. It um, doesn't really work that well. If I can illustrate that a little bit as well, I would say there's probably at least one instance with a like childhood friend, you know, like you got along with. And in that kind of like transition more towards the like minion, mm -hmm. um, you had a friend who was like resistant and very stubborn and wouldn't go along with what you wanted or what you said. And you experienced the shattering, you know, like that moment in a friendship where there's no way back and you just know that it's completely yeah. destroyed. Yeah. It's like, well, not friends anymore. It's not going to happen. Big argument. Like, flash moments of like her her past uh emotional outbursts yeah um i think that's probably a good way to illustrate it for tori for hopelessness <laughs> yeah. um if i can i would say a possible other one would be um multiple visits uh, around birthdays uh by her mom yeah when she comes back and gives tori the exact same present birthday present <laughs> three years in a row and it, tori realizes it's not even that she doesn't care it's that she's so busy she doesn't remember yeah that's her mom is definitely a source of uh you think she's the type to send her assistant out to get you your gift yeah yeah exactly <laughs> And the worst part about it is the attempt to connect with her daughters and her son are sincere. The execution is extremely awkward. Yeah, she's and just really bad at it. Yeah. She's just really bad she's at it. Never really, never really much of a mom. Uh, but in a different way than George's uh, parents are not really yeah. parents either. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the yeah the gift is is something like. Tori mentioned loving when she was like five and now she's like 12. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a little bunny with like like oh, a, yeah. bow, a, a bow tied in the ears. Like the ears are yeah. like squished together. She's got like the whole like the whole like it's an earnest attempt, but it's an earnest attempt way too late. Yeah. She's got like three or four of them now and she never liked them, you know, since the age of like <laughs> really 12 like anyway. Them that much anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's that's probably it, you know, stagger back flash flash memory stuff going on um does it hurt? is it painful it, it, be, like it, physically no. like your nerves would be humming a little bit almost vibrating but um you actually keep your consciousness i'm just wondering if tori's uh, like with it enough to act recklessly here um because this is obviously like something supernatural um and George is okay. I as far as can be seen. George just, yeah, and probably sat just up like and sitting said, up what brushing rubble <laughs> off. Yeah. I think there's a moment of Tori being like uh like calling out as this thing um runs up her arm and like it brings these memories to bear, like un unbidden, where she's like No get out get, get out of my head you know like like very <laughs> like very like commanding direct like calling that power to bear if she can like it's but this is almost like un unbidden right it's just like it's high emotion and so it is utilized you know yeah and the uh as you say that the orb like shoots along your back along your arm and out and kind of out it kind of like God, I hate to say it, but almost like a Dragon Ball Z, like a key blast. It just, it just like flies, it flies outward like that and then stops and kind of like hangs there for a second. And you can see now it's actually grown a fair amount. It's like, 
it's larger and there's like little cracks of lightning going around it. So when it so when it leaves, I think there's there's the, the take a breath and then the so you can understand what I'm saying then. Like you're not just some force. And it, it keeps with the murmuring and the whispering and it's it's got like it's got essentially like a kind of like along with kind of like a more kind of like whispery high pitched like Mm-hmm. Um, I will add here that the moment, um, because Cecilia was also going, uh, like, to touch George, then the whole stuff with Tori happens, um, the moment, like, Tori has that struggle and, like, pushing the light out and stuff, uh, Cecilia is bending down, uh, like, kneeling down next to George because, like, George went through a pew. Like, yeah. you can't just, you can't tell me you can just brush that off and be fine. Like, that's something you see no. in fucking movies. Like, that's not that's something saying, a Like, I'm picking being. rubble off myself. <laughs> like, that has to fucking hurt. There's, um, there's some, like, there's some, like, scratches on her face. Like, very, very slight and, you know, like, she's kind of covered in splinters as well because the pews are, are wood. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she's, she's got a couple of cuts and scrapes and things, but as you look... Um, they actually start to like close up slightly, like not completely, but the blood stops flowing and it just. Um, I think um, as I'm watching that happen, I'm definitely like pulling a, a arm behind her back to like help her up. Yeah. a bit and to like assess if there's like if she's hurt at her back or stuff like that just being like hey are you all right you took you went f like flying and, like dude what you... happened at uh, the weird kind of light thing went inside of you huh <gasps> you you, you Do i remember my conversation with jeff you yeah i do Oh my god. No, it was. It's a virus. It's like a bug. It's like a virus. Where is it? And I'm gonna, like, try to scramble up amidst the rubble and, like, look around for the glowing blue thing. And you can hear it as well. It's like, over there! It, it's, hum <laughs> it's humming and it's whispering and it's it's right, like, kind of... And it's actually lighter. Like, it's emanating some light now. Uh, it's essentially kind of, like... Uh, I wouldn't say cracks in it appear, but there's, there's like like god rays of light kind of coming out of it at certain oh, angles I see what you're here saying, and there. yeah and then they and then they fade and then more cr more come like it's almost like it's it contains light and the light is escaping tori is getting ready for a big tantrum energy just so you know it's coming yeah. like she's clearly mad um i'm just going to start like if tori's near it i'm going to walk over and be like do not touch it don't touch it it's like a virus it's like a virus it, it all it's a, and she's like I already touched you, and it's already touched me, but when I told what? it to leave, it left. It left? That's it's not... It is, yeah. Don't touch it! Just gonna look around at everyone else. Don't touch it. Is it still, like, clearly visible, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well... I'm not gonna touch it. <laughs> any ideas on how we can deal with something that is clearly able to go through objects and is clearly possessed i was thinking about putting it in a jar but i think you can just go out of a jar and then the light uh like rays that have been coming out uh it starts to spin a bit quicker it, uh, start, oh no. <laughs> it starts to hum a bit louder and the light starts to form together as it gets brighter and the light like bursts out of this orb and kind of like just bathes the entire area in this like luminous bright light making the shadows in the area even darker and you start to hear this kind of like almost uh tarry bubbly like bloop 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 Sorry. sounds <laughs> Sorry reacts to this all already pissed off and whatever and says like Go back into your statue and never come out again, you know, like as as like directly as she can to it. Like if it listens, then that's great. Um 
as you shout that. Again, she's absolutely overusing her power a whole lot here. Yeah. Um, as you shout that, you hear like a bubbling kind of a little bit behind you. Um, back kind of towards where the uh where one of the pillars is. Um and if you look, I've got I'm not sure if you're focused too much on the... I mean, Tori is hoping the orb will move. The um, orb doesn't move. Then she probably looks if she can hear something happening. Um, You see this, like, essentially forming up out of the shadows uh, cast by the light. Is this kind of very basic, almost like stick figure looking uh, being, like, rising up. And like, and as it rises up, it kind of drips like almost tar-like uh, blackness from bits oh, of it. God. Oh God! Nope. Something nope. that is happening nope. around all of you in multiple areas. Like, nope. I would say around about fifteen to twenty of these beings are starting to rise up out of the shadows nope. cast by the light. Sorry. We... Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, we... how? Everyone, get back! I. I'm gonna we, like before we're anyone to can run do anything, or start destroying things. Yeah. Be happy, Tori. When think about your last meet. Did you win? Didn't you win some amazing meet recently? Be happy. I remember this. Be happy. It's feeding off sad. Stop okay. being so pissed. Okay. All right. It's uh. Tori. Like tries to like take that under advisement. It's a little bit you know going from anger to happy right away. It's uh, difficult. Sing a um, song. We could sing a song. Anything except no doubt. <laughs> Tori again looks at George and is like, "You could eat it." <laughs> Let's... Eat which one? The, she looks the, around at like uh, every <laughs> single shadow in the place, starting to ooze up into some maybe like weird fantasia stick like, figure. <laughs> maybe we should like get out of the church and regroup and. Uh, I don't know how to handle these things. For reference, you guys are all up near the statue, kind of around the front of the pews. Uh, they're coming up from all around, so they are in between you and the door. Are they now. completely identical to my eye? No. Okay. George is going to start singing. What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> if they're not identical, if they're like. Is it like, what? are we doing shadow clone techniques and one of them is genuine and the others are. What? Um, they they are essentially beings made of shadow. The best way I can describe them is they look a bit like stick figures. They are just very basic. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, how all the stick figures do they look alike to me, or is there like? They all look alike to you. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Just wanted that clarification. Thank you. Oh, cheapy. Mm -hmm. I will frantically take out my flesh, like. And try to shine it <laughs> at one of the things. <laughs> like you remember, you you can totally see it, like fumbling, right? Like fumbling to get like a flashlight, being like yeah. shit, 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 and trying to to shine it on one of them. Okay. Um. Yeah. As you kind of like turn your flashlight and like shine it at uh, one of them, the the like beam of light like hits it and starts it starts to kind of crumble a little bit and some of the some of the shadow kind of drops off like tar until there's like a hole uh all the way through it and the beam of light just kind of like shines all the way through it however you feel something grab your leg ah. and below you ah. um and a little bit uh you realize that there's a couple of hands that have come out of the shadows below you. Oh no. And have like grabbed both of your legs and ha your feet have very slowly started to sink into <laughs> the floor. I immediately do point my flashlight down and I'm like, holy shit, uh, light hurts them, but they're, they're on the floor. They're on the floor. At the same time, um, three or four each start moving to each of you like in a kind of slow fairly ponderous movement like li like sloughing off bits of shadow and like hitting the ground and 
Sorry, George again. is actually singing. Like I am sitting here with my eyes closed, going, "L is for Sorry. the way you look <laughs> at me." Just spinning with her eyes closed because yeah. I don't know what to do, and that's like the one, I can. I have a very vivid memory of dancing with my dad in the kitchen when I'm like three years old, and my feet are on his feet, and we're singing that song. It's on the radio. Yeah, that's it. I can. I can make it happier if I need to. Let's get fucking tears. That's happy. That's, that's delightful, but Tori's a little more practical. So she's going <laughs> to grab George by the, like, front of her shirt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Be like, snap out of it, George. Like, I, you know, like. You have to eat them. <laughs> I'll probably uh, turn towards Tori if I can well, and grab her hands and start waltzing. Before you do any of that, Tori, your eyes shift to emerald and a little bit of salt. <laughs> and George, you stop, like, you, you kind of. You stop panicking, you stop that happy thought and everything, and you snap out of the kind of like desperate attempt to be happy. You aren't happy. So anymore. can I not be happy now? I think it's, I like just, it's impossible. It, I think I the command was snap out of it, George. Yeah. So I So snap out of trying to be happy because that's what it, Chef Jeff told me to do in my in head. In this moment, in I this guess. Moment, yeah. You snap out. So of then I fall attempt. to the ground, crisscross applesauce, and start sobbing <laughs> madly just Shit. violent like snot in my mouth down my chin uncontrollable tori, tori doesn't have time to apologize to you at this point Whoa. like holy shit can you guys get it together what are you doing over there so i'm i'm going to paint a scene very quickly okay uh cecilia is about up to her knees sinking into shadow being dragged down by these hands that are right reaching up and grabbing her uh will i assume you're backing up Yep. Uh, so Will that, is that is that is very accurate. <laughs> Will, Will is just backed up in between a couple of pillars. As a I few... have an idea, but I'm not going to do it yet. Okay. I don't want to wait for gap. Uh, uh, as a few um, like sh let's call them shadow monsters, if everyone's comfortable with that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> the as the shadow monsters start moving towards him, um, Tori has just you know basically done a mental equivalent of slapped uh, George across the face and God snap out of it. <laughs> uh, and is uh, kind of frustrated. George has just collapsed uh, to the um, to the floor in uh, not utter despair, but there is some. <laughs> what toes? I can't be happy until she tells me I can now. Ninety nine percent despair. <laughs> um, and George, we're back again. Oh shit! Uh, everything goes dark again. You're lost in that kind of floating hopelessness again. And you hear a voice again. Is it Jeff? Hey, kid. I don't want to anymore. You don't want to what? I don't know. This? Can I retire? You can, I guess. It might take some work. harder than working with teenagers you you are a teenager fact stands yeah sick what's up uh, just wondering what you're doing to... I tried to be happy because right. didn't you say I had to be happy that was the way to get it out of here you're here being well, now it's out there, so I figure, like, being happy might do something. I don't know. We didn't exactly get written instructions for any of this. True. But you're aware of what you can do, yes? No. What? I love this. <laughs> <sighs> Jesus. What I can do? Eat large amounts of food. You contain within yourself essentially what could be described as uh, almost infinite consumption. Yes, but my mouth is only, and she's gonna like, you know, nothing's ever be like this big. Right. Have you, um, have you tried inhaling? You're joking, right? How much you can inhale. 
No. Take the biggest again, slurp ever. Didn't drunk. get instructions. So, um, A, you can, if you like, uh, not just consume something. Uh, something like this you may not want to consume. Try storing it until you need to bring it back up again. So, stop being quite so depressed as you are. You're still young. It gets a lot worse. Stand up. Help your friends. And take one deep inhale and see about pulling up that weird light. Okay. Okay. Sir? <laughs> sure, why not? Go on then. Suck the balls. Sick. Don't come back for a while. I don't think I did this by choice. Well, get up. And as he says, get up, your eyes open, and you find yourself, like, uh, everyone would have seen, like, George with her, like, her head down, and then suddenly she, like, stands up, and then her head goes up and her eyes open. Double way from and Tori's still right next to me. Probably like yes. Oh, good. You're good. Alive she was again. in the middle of shouting at you. I'm. I'm yeah. Mo I'm mostly getting ready to force you to do the thing you're probably about to do anyway. Like yeah. the the plan for Tori was like, I know you can de deal with this somehow. Like she was just gonna for force you to do it. Yeah. I, the blue I'd like to try thing, thing is still around, right? <laughs> yeah. The blue Orby thing. It's not just the creepy things. No, the blue. Or did the blue orb thing like the blow blue, up? The blue orb is essentially pulsing out light currently. Okay, I'm gonna walk up to it and try to literally inhale it. Okay. And if Tori tries to stop me, I just fa face hand in the face, like not, push the not, body no, back no, if I can. No stopping at all. No. So you take a step forward and start to inhale. I guess, or like. Yeah, I don't know. It, I think it's a solid thing. So the act of inhaling a solid thing is absolutely baffling to me, especially as respiratory therapists don't do that. But anyways, it's, yeah, I guess. So, I don't um, put my mouth on it. It's a supernatural in <laughs> yeah. I think more, it's more, I think I'm like, my, like, her, George's brain is like, okay, logically, there's no way that this mouth, this body can hold things like this guy's talking so it's probably more of an inner like I'm ups, I'm take I'm consuming this thing, you know what I mean? She's trying to put not so much of a phys physical effort into consuming it, but more of a like this is now your like your holding sack or whatever you know you know what I mean? Yeah. Using the inner like oomph to do it more yeah. so than just like ah like munching a cookie. Yeah, no, you're you're essentially you take a step forward and start to inhale and the amount of air you start to bring in surprises you you also you don't um you don't like like you know you don't get really big with air or anything like that you stay yeah. the same size and and everything um but very very quickly after a couple of seconds you realize and anyone else watching realizes which i think may not include currently cecilia and will just because both of them are, are kind of in a little bit of a a standoff. Will, Will is going to try something, though. Okay. Uh, w while George was having her little internal discussion with Jeff Jeff, <laughs> uh, Will wanted to try one of those, you know, the memorial candles that people light and stick in the thing. Yeah. Uh, he um, Will will try, will take a, one of the matches and, and light a candle and see if that, like, he, he, you, you might as well try to gain some information about the enemy and it's like, hey, this is a church and these are things of shadow. They don't usually match in like folklore and stuff. Let's, what happens if we wave a holy candle at it? And it's like, because, you know, the candles have the XP on them. Uh, the symbol of the, uh, the church and stuff. I thought you meant like life points. Oh my no, no. God. XP. 
I'm not expecting a Patronum either. <laughs> No, 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 the, the, the accent be uh, So, uh, I'll, Will will light one of the candles and hold it up against the shadow things and see if they slow down or anything. Um, no. Okay. Uh, essentially, uh, Will, you... <laughs> you anger the dog demons that suddenly yeah. appeared. <laughs> well, to be the fair, graveyard keeper her, opens her the door. dogs are known as the demon and the void. There you go. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, but no, you you like you you hold up the the candle and uh, it, it's you know it doesn't seem to have much of an effect at all as far as you're aware. Yeah. Uh, and but you've got enough space you could keep kind of like backing up and. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I I just wanted to try it and then I I imagine Will sees the light start to flicker towards george yeah yeah the inhaling it's, it's start, start, and he goes... it starts to it starts to flicker <laughs> yeah. a little bit it starts to move it and like there's a little rush of air just in in general for everyone yeah, yeah. like um, I ima imagine it's not like a space balls somebody stop this thing holding on to the yeah i not not quite i will because no, like because i think i use my inner oomph and not my physical like i'm consciously only tr i'm trying to inhale the light not necessarily the air in the room that would cause like wind or something right so there is some wind kind of Gets, oh God, gets yeah. drawn in as well yeah the um, biggest burp ever it, it is it is um it is in nature physical as well so the the draw is it, it's not like it's not like a tractor beam it, yeah. it's it's much more like a like a, a, a inverse mm. fan or something i guess question yeah the, all the all the track smoke uh trace thing that i can see with the eye the shadow things are they leaving a trace and is it the same trace that was there before or is it no, a new no. one or no trace whatsoever they have no no real trace okay question number two uh, the trace from earlier that was here when we got in is that being sucked towards george as well or is that from the nt thing yeah yeah, yeah yes, exactly yeah. okay so you that is cool george can actually remove evidence by eating the astral like signatures mm. that's cool making a note of that absolutely <laughs> uh and, i'm a void yeah and um the so uh the uh the entity itself like kind of there's a bit of shuddering and a bit of uh a bit of kind of like resistance but as you keep going and you keep going it starts to get drawn and actually the flame of it uh actually kind of like like bends over towards you like it's being you know kind of pulled in towards you um please roll me a go toe to toe uh you will i believe if i've calculated this right be rolling this at a plus three plus four in fact plus four yeah. is that um, because of all my chef down. jeff coaching god it, it's because of your gluttony uh powers. oh yeah my yeah damn okay uh nice. toe to toe all as, right you little, as little a, blue ball as a sidebar when you've had to face danger earlier one of the minus tags you took was the the mental weakness that uh, is part of the whole shebang uh yeah, that makes Come on, sense. Come on, George! Yay! <laughs> hey, fingers crossed. <laughs> I love, I love a great success. Oh yeah. Great success, yes. la la la. Yeah, girl. And then that movie wasn't out yet. I'm sorry, sorry. As as you keep as you keep pulling in the the air and the smoke and the essence around you, uh, the the uh, the ball itself starts to uh, like stretch as part of it is drawn towards you until it's kind of like stretched out and the humming turns into more of like a wail or a whine until eventually whatever's anchoring it, whatever's holding it back from being drawn towards you just like snaps and it just goes and then just gets drawn into your mouth. And what I'll say is you don't feel anything like in the sense you don't of feel full or... you don't feel full you don't feel like you just inhaled a white blue flame orb thing 
for electricity or anything like that. But as you as it gets drawn into you, uh, the light fades as it as it disappears, and the the shadow uh, creatures, the shadow monsters, kind of crumble into nothingness. Where it they they essentially like they start blooping and they start like dripping away oh, parts please. of themselves. And when they land on the ground, they kind of fade into uh, like shadow mist that just dissipates into nothing. Um, I will say that uh, for Tori, who was getting, uh, you know, uh, moved towards, uh, for Will, who was getting moved towards, and for Celia, who was essentially desperately like shining her light, trying to like slow down yeah. the the sucking of um, of shadow. Uh, that all dissipates uh, slowly and, um, you know, essentially within about 20 seconds, maybe, they are not, there's nothing left. There's no evidence of any type of like shadow monsters or remnants of anything aside from the broken pew. And, and George, George, you're, you're kind of like, like head back, like full, full kind of like drawing in. And yeah. you just go, and then just a very small. Grrr. I'm just gonna say, please let me burp. <laughs> okay, but cheapy, when your legs are already halfway into the floor, the the shadow as it d dissipates, um, you basically get uh, get pushed back up. Like, <laughs> oh, good. You, you don't. Oh, that's, yeah, that's you, good. You don't suddenly have your uh, your legs like chopped off in the floor somewhere or anything like that. Ah, good. I wouldn't know what to do with that. Yeah, no clipped in the floor, you know. <laughs> this is where you live now, Cece. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll tell your mom. And the the light fades away. Um, you you still have a few little uh bits of light coming through the um uh the stained glass window, but the rest of the church is dead quiet. And essentially. The, any remnant that you were seeing, Will, any kind of like uh, supernatural, it's it's so slight and so vague, you could confuse it for just like a patch of mist or something, you know. Like oh, it, okay. There's very little left, and most of How it is about, behind where George was. What what is the statue doing? Nothing. It's okay. just it's just has a sword pointing upwards. It's pointing up though, and not down now. Yeah. Okay. So, did that just uh, uh well, I did it. I, I was about to say, when there's an awkward silence of nothing going, Will goes, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's such a 90s fucking end. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everybody jumps at the same time, <laughs> it just goes, Yeah. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> and looks around, and there is no reaction from the others. <laughs> and it just goes. <laughs> we did okay. it! Okay. Well, <laughs> imagine the rest of us just start you... wandering towards the church doors, leaving as well. As, like, <laughs> no, I yeah, think, I think like, we oh, aren't. We night. I'm not immediately moving out the door. I'm. <laughs> you know, this all just happened. You don't just. Okay, cool. And then just start walking out the door. <laughs> Mission complete. Let's hand in the quest. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you I... actually ate them. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. What did that taste like? Holy fuck. I knew you could do Nothing. it. Nothing. Hmm. I guess I can... Uh... Do some more than just eat stuff. So that's sick. Like I mean, for instance, when... I didn't eat it. I'm holding it. What is that You're... supposed to mean? Holding it? I'm holding it. I'm like a mason jar. But like a Mary Poppins bag mason jar. So, so uh, you, you just you just keeping it. What do we what do we do with it? I was told it wasn't safe to to eat, so I guess I just hold it until we think of something to do with it. 
I then don't you Ash get it. Ashford and then will you. Know. Oh, maybe we could give it to Ashford. No, that'd be a bad plan. But no, for real. It's. I'm, I'm a cow with four stomachs, I guess. Will, Tori can you like, see Tori if any more that's like, around? <laughs> Tori looks Oop. like refle reflexively. I think, that she I think that wants to say something about the cow comment, but uh, doesn't. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, no, Will has a look around. Nothing left. I'm like, nope, we're all good. Cool. Um, and Will holds up his hand to George for looking for like a high five. Like, it was super happy look on his face. Like, yeah. She'll pity high five. She'll, she'll pity high five. Yeah. Pity high five. Pity high five. Good, good job, Will's kind of on cloud nine right now. He's looking around with like nothing left. And he, right. he, he gets rid Bless of the eye. So like the, the eye fades away and it's just like, yeah. <laughs> maybe, uh, you know, I celebration's great and all, but maybe this is beating a dead horse. But um, so Will can see the danger. I can talk to the danger. George can eat the danger. We still haven't seen anything from, like, a wave, a hand wave to Cecilia. Like, and Cecilia can rip the danger apart. Allegedly. But she didn't, though. She shined a flashlight at it. Hey, mm. I didn't have a defense, flashlight. In my defense, it didn't make a hole in them, and it... I'm not saying it didn't work. I'm just... Do you know what you can do? Not this again. I think it's going to be this always. I just ate a big blue ball. <laughs> of electric magic. You inhaled it. You said yourself you didn't eat it. Anyway. Okay. You <laughs> okay. shredded some beast. You like Wolverine up in there? Maybe we should all get out of the church before no, someone now else she catches wants to us. leave. Now she wants to leave right away. The, the fact that you're dodging this so relentlessly is is because I still won't let you force me into this. So why do you even come? You're a volunteer. You don't have to be here. Exactly, Facts. because I want to come. To do what? To help. With your flashlight? I'm just... I'm... Curious as to why. I'm not going to force you. I don't think we can. No, I can. Oh. Look... I really don't want to talk about this right now. All right, when? Let's. When do you want to talk about it? I know church at midnight after we've just survived a horrifying experience is probably not ideal. Whenever I want to, whenever I feel like I can. Not knowing what you do puts our lives in danger. What just I now, do is my business. Up until not knowing what you can If you can't don't do, want me to help you, talk to Ashford, and I'll step out of the group. I will talk to Ashford, and we will find out what's going on. If you talk to Ashford, it's for me stepping out of the group. I'm trying to help on my own terms, in my own way. If you don't want that, if you can't accept that, then... The fact that you don't seem to understand why I'm asking you is beyond suspicious. So, I don't really know what your problem is, but I'm getting a little sick of it. I just want to live. That, that whole thing could have ended a lot differently, and if George wasn't some kind of eating machine then how would we have gotten out of that you ripping things apart 
that that was my next guess. Yes, and I also want to live a normal fucking life. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Like, we all know this stuff exists now. There has Norm to be normal a way. Normal is over. There has to be a way to go back to not have to... Eat. There has to be something. I want to find that so you're just looking for a way out. I'm not gonna accept that because I touched some fucking fox that I can't live the life I was planning to live. All right. Well, see, now I know why you're here. That's all I'm asking, right? You want a way out. All right, we'll look for one. <laughs> I, d I don't want to be your enemy here. I... Uh, I... Apologize. I am not good at... Any of this and... Clearly not good at making friends. <laughs> Tori looks a little like... Her expression softens a little bit from this like angry imperious vibe uh mm. to to more of a like look that's fine i just want to keep us all safe you know and some of us like we don't feel so good about it either i mean the three of us we're we're stuck in this because ashford said so and because apparently he'll kill george just for saying hey, maybe I don't want to, right? Yeah. So I'm trying to do this the, the best way that I know how to do it, and I'm as new to it as you are. If you want to find a way out, we'll find you one. There's got to be something. If all of this is real, then there's got to be a way to get rid of whatever's affecting you. You know, when I was up in my head, Chef Jeff might live there. I don't really know what's happening, but he said that this little, the little blue light was like another thing, like the things we have. So like if they're out and about like that, maybe we can get it out of you. There has Look. to be some way. You can't be stuck eternally. And I'll, I'll have... I am going to find that way. Um, if you let us, I think we'd help. And even though... I... I can't... I, even though whatever we... Uh, sh share... Um, however you want to, to call uh, it... Um, I... Believe me when I say that I also want to keep you safe. Um, we don't have to be friends for that. It's not anything along the source, but I... I will also do anything to keep all of you safe. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I'll drop it, okay? But I'm just worried about you, that's all. Come on, let's go. We should uh, get out of here before somebody comes looking. We made a lot of noise. George will look at her little watch and uh, be like, yeah, bars are letting out. Best to, best to be <laughs> Tori, ahead Tori, of that Tori's, crowd. Tori's gesture is to the broken pew, like... Yeah. And, uh... I cannot pay for that. 
No, you could wings. eat. You could eat it. And <laughs> just that. eat the he broken pews. Oh there's my. just one it's missing. Maybe suspicious. he won't count. It's the less scene suspicious. Is like the two pews are rising gone. through all this, all the stained glass windows, and George is still sitting there, like oh, yeah. <laughs> eating cut splinters. Cut. <laughs> cut to like half an hour later and all three of you have george like upside down held and like a hoover just like <laughs> <laughs> it's like a wheelbarrow race at school yeah. <laughs> i love the idea that two pews are broken on the left so george eats them and then we take a pew from the light from the left and then rearrange them so the spacing's right and that way no one will know it's the perfect crime. Well, but what we actually do is leave right yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it would just basically be like some kids broke in uh, and vandalized yeah. You know, I mean, there's a key you. under the mat. That's like the least secure yeah, location in history. Um, um, if if she could, George, before they left, she'd probably grab a can of spray out of her backpack or something and do like some jerk at schools tag somewhere just yeah. to try to I you know about... really put it off the trail. <laughs> I was about to say if there is like conveniently a trash can or something like if people are putting trash out and there's an empty liquor bottle, Cecilia would place it like next to the door or something. Staging it, yeah. <laughs> so sad. And then we all just kind of scuttle our separate ways and head home, I guess. Well, as you leave, you hear, oh, how did it go? Oh, God. Oh my! Sorry. Will spins around, looks at the statue, and goes, "We came, we saw, we kicked its ass." Uh, and when, when no one reacts, it goes. It didn't exactly go like that. Ghostbusters? Anyone? anyone? I don't see what, what, what does that mean. <sighs> we took care of it. It's dealt with. You shouldn't see any blinking lights anymore. Oh. Uh, okay. In that case, I guess I'll move on. Yeah. We'll tell Ash. We'll tell Ashford everything's good. Tell him I'll see him at the mines in a couple of days. Uh, okay, I will. Did you get Thank that? You. So like... See him at the mines in a couple of days. Jeez, Tori, you like the translator over here. Great, yeah. How? I'm just trying to. I'm baffled. How? But. Um, as you all head uh, towards the gate at the front of the thing, you hear that kind of like grinding on stone again, and this kind of like whoomph. Um, if any of you look, if any of you look back, you either see the like retreating into darkness of essentially like feet claws type thing up into the sky or just nothing as both of the statues have disappeared so we really did just talk to two gargoyles by the door right will at this point goes well technically they're not gargoyles they're grotesques up I... she'll kind of give him a sock <laughs> on the stomach <laughs> and keep walking and <laughs> just <You> goes <laughs> You think they'll believe that a, a group of drunk kids took two gargoyle statues as well? <laughs> if Doesn't they matter. were ever there. No cameras, so we're okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. This is a weird night. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, Do the buses run this late? Can I even... She, like, Do doesn't you... know... Yeah, there's like one, but I wouldn't sit anywhere on it. Right. If you catch my drift. And if there's any liquid moving on the ground, don't step in that. It's like two blocks that way, and she'll point like north towards the nicer part of town. I, I, um, I drove here. Um, so I, I, I could drop at someone off if they needed it um i'm gonna throw a thought into cecilia's head as well Can how we... dare you <laughs> well it's something you think about at this point um you weren't sure how long tonight was going to take and you told your dad that you were staying over with someone to study yes yeah, she knows if you turn up at home um <laughs> she knows okay 
She knows. All right. But... Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So, I mean, when you offer, uh, Tori's like, I mean, if it's not out of your way. George, just be doing like this, like... No. Wait, who is George? Idea. Who is No, I'm George? just saying, like, she okay. should absolutely go with, for a ride. Like, do not get on that bus. That is the dirtiest, nastiest, piss-covered, like, needle-infested bus. Like, this is a better idea. <laughs> like, that's all she's saying, yeah. I've... No, I'm um, not not at, at all. Uh, unless you're. Don't ask me to stop by a forest for you to go look at a tree. Um, I, I, I had that happen once before, and I n nearly, uh, yeah, just. Yeah, I won't be doing that. Oh, cr great! Yeah, that's. Then yeah, totally. Unless there's a cool tree. <laughs> no, no, I, there's no cool, there's absolutely no cool tree. The That's only great, thing there is great. a giant spider. Great. All right. Well, uh, that solves that problem. Sick. Well, um, I'm, I'm just a couple blocks this way, so I'm just going to head off. Uh, Will, you, you chill? Like, do you, what are you doing? You want to uh, just crash? I, cool. I, I should be fine. Yeah, I'm going home. How? Um, it's not that far, actually. Um, just hoof it. 20, 20, 30 minute walk. Yeah. She lights a cigarette and starts just off the other way, contemplating the what there. the hell just happened and what's inside of her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got a cool orb. Yeah, in my holding tank, my Mary Poppins come come. <laughs> holding tank. <laughs> I just imagine it's like the Poppins bag. Yeah, you you are a bag of holding. It's gonna gonna be awkward next time you go into your mind palace. Your mind palace. Oh, I'm gonna become fucking legion. <laughs> Who oh are Oh my god, we? it's so crowded in here. It wasn't what like this last time. What do we stand time. for? <laughs> That's gonna fight be sick. with me, my soldiers. <laughs> no. Okay, gather round me, children. <laughs> So, uh, 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 George, George, George heads, heads off, uh, Will, I'm guessing also heads off on to get, yeah. uh, to the walk. We will, um, follow Cecilia and Tori, seeing as Cecilia is giving Tori a lift, and I feel like there may be an awkward conversation coming up in a minute. Um, so you get, uh, you park, don't park not too far away, um, and, uh, jump in the car. Um, uh so uh, so where where do i need to drop you off i mean it's just down this road and uh up on the left a little way uh, all right uh <laughs> the funny thing is it's like i think it's way out uh, no it's, it's not. way out of your way it's, it's like... way out of my way like Tori's on the north side of town. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Cecilia doesn't say anything about that when she when you like explain to her where to go. <laughs> um, she thinks to herself, like, oh, "Yeah, that's way out of the way." Um. Uh, yeah, she starts driving. Um, and I think definitely, unless you fill that in for like the first minute, there's silence. <laughs> Tori said she'd drop it, so she's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, just in general, uh, the first minute there would be silence of just Cecilia, like, looking around, like, looking around outside of her window and, like, just, like, it's the, it's the very awkward silence, at least on her part, of, like, how do I start this conversation? Do I start a conversation? I, I don't know if I should, um. <laughs> Tori so, looks like she's just trying to, like decompress slightly you know what i mean okay like, yeah yeah oh my god the, the worst is over you know yeah, yeah um so then i think the minute of silence like stays there <laughs> um and as she notices that tori is like absolutely silent as well like not initiating conversation uh she just goes like 
so, um, what did you, uh, say to, uh, get out of the house, um, at midnight? Or is it something, I, or, you know, if, if, if it's something that you can regularly do to go out or, I, I've snuck out before, but, uh, I didn't have to say anything. I just didn't run into anyone. And, uh, well, I left my car so I wouldn't have to, you know, make a whole lot of noise. Is this, your, your parents don't, um, y you can just go out? Oh, no. They'll kill me if they knew I was out at midnight, but, uh, they were already asleep, so. Oh, uh. Yeah. You know, just quiet down the stairs, open the door, leave. Uh, that sounds pretty easy. Um, I, yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, your parents don't wake up, like, super early? My, mine do. <laughs> Not like 2 a.m. early. She says, like, it's still dark. I figured if I wasn't back by the end of the night, we had bigger problems. That's actually a fairly sound reasoning. <laughs> oh, I... Why did your, uh, your parents give you trouble? Um... Kind kind of uh, sort of um I'm I'm sure it's not gonna be any um problem or anything um I'm just um yeah no um they they wake up early and stuff but uh, <laughs> Tori that... just ro Tori just rolls her eyes like come on spit it out like what 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 are you trying to say no it it wouldn't. <laughs> I'm sure it won't be a problem. It's... I'm just the, the way probably... you say you're sure that it won't be a problem suggests I'm... to me that it's gonna be a problem. She says in the way that, like, you know, I am cutting to the heart of this argument, like, or conversation. I this is uh, this is probably not gonna sound cool, or I I don't know. I I don't want to disappoint. My parents. Um, yeah, I get it. Yeah, and I'm. I'm pretty sure that if when I uh, come home tonight, uh, my dad, at least he's not gonna say it. He, he, he wouldn't. Um, but I'm sure he would be disappointed why would you be disappointed with you coming home um uh, yeah you know um because i kind of um told him i would be going out to have a study sleep over with some friends and um i don't need to you know, you know, there was no there. Okay, there so was no you just study don't, sleepover. You just don't want to get caught in your lie. Then stay over at my place. I don't want to. I don't want to dis disappoint him and let him know that I uh, don't do sleepovers often. Did you did you not hear what I just? said stay at my place then he'll never know uh, and my dad's not gonna care like oh who's this in the morning i'll be like you didn't hear her come in last night dad and it'll be fine uh, you you sure it wouldn't be a problem no it's all right Um, besides, everyone else has. 
you know, like stayed at my place or at least been there from our little gang. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't mean the little uh, gang we were just out with, by the way. I don't want to talk about that little gang. Right, I didn't, I wasn't as, assuming that you had George or Will um, stay at your place. Uh, George has been to my place. I mean, we were like 10, but, you know. Yeah, um, I, I think I would like that. All right, cool. We just have to be quiet, you know, going in. I think uh, if we didn't catch any attention in uh, at the church and all of that, it should be fine. Um, right, I'll be well, quiet. <laughs> uh, it's right here. Just um, park outside the gate, because if we move the gate, it's going to make a whole bunch of noise and... You know, headlights and all that. We'll try and avoid that. I think um, as they get closer, there's definitely a moment of like, oh shit, like I knew she was like, she had like, she came from a wealthier family, but like being like, oh shit, yeah, actually like. But- she's at, she's absolutely top 0.1% in town. <sighs> For sure. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, hmm. Um, so yeah, she'll, um, she will, uh, do, um, as Sori said, and, uh, park outside of the gates, um, and will then, uh, as they, uh, uh, get out of the car and uh, shut it down, um, wait to follow Tori. Uh, yeah, she she's looking sne- very nervous. She leads you. She leads you sneakily across the courtyard and over to the um, to the like front door yeah. where she takes out her key and like quietly sort of opens it up yeah. and slips inside. She uh, shoes off for yeah for maximum quietness and yeah. <laughs> There's no issues. You sneak upstairs and to Tori's room, and uh, yeah. I don't think it needs to be mentioned, but because it's so obvious, Cecilia is very nervous. She like, and also like, it's. I I think to Tori, she has insight on um t- people, especially teenage girls. Uh, it's it's clear that she has never done this before. Like, ne- it's clear that yeah. she has never had a sleepover. And, and Tori is kind of like in that stage of this like conversation that we've had where she was really mean to you just a little bit ago and like really drilled into like something you didn't want to talk about and now she's doing the like nice the the nice side the like of that you know the manipulation is like present even when it's not present yeah. sort of thing um and once you're you're up once they're both up in up in her room and like haven't been interrupted or accosted um she looks around and goes like Bed's big enough. Well, don't need to get me blankets from anywhere. Whatever. Um, sorry about the mess. She says, looking around, it's not messy. It's not even a. It's not even slightly not, messy. Not, like, not I was even gonna ask, slightly. Like, is there like no, a sock? it is clean. <laughs> there's like there's like a scattering of like uh you know various makeup palettes and so forth on like a on like a on a vanity right um and the bookshelves are nicely organized and there are indeed bookshelves in here maybe Um, a maybe a spare outfit like flung over the back of a chair but not even not even messy just kind of like i have the perfect idea you said that tori reads like the the romance she did she does indeed read trashy (laughs) romance yeah (laughs) So I think that as um as they are in the room, like you say, like oh don't mind the mess, and Cecilia like actually looks around to look at the clearly no mess. Um, she notices the uh bookshelf 
and like takes a step closer to look at the books that there and then she notices like the the trashy romance. I think I think <laughs> while you're doing that Tori's not looking she's like you know getting an extra pillow from somewhere or whatever like yeah it, she uh she she looks at them and like recognizes one of the titles and <laughs> picks it out and just like turns around and uh <laughs> looks at, at what Tori is doing just like I I you like these as well? <laughs> Tori's like she turns around and sees the book you got in her hand and she is like for the first time ever that you've seen her she looks like embarrassed you know what I mean like there's a moment of like oh, oh I, shit I didn't think you were oh, gonna I'm, look at I'm that so, you know? I'll put it back I'm so sorry uh, I didn't mean to uh, oh I, it's it's okay I just didn't expect you to go you know straight for the bookshelf yeah I, I books are kind of my thing as well um not just school books but uh, yeah I'll and she puts it back in there. Just, let's not mention that to anyone. Yeah. Um. I mean, they all do it, but like, still. Yeah. I, I wasn't planning uh to. All right, good. Just I I know that one. I also read it. Um, the. The um. The plot is pretty shitty, but their romance. <laughs> the plot is pretty shitty. The, is yeah. good. The the book is called um, A Rose in My Palm, and it's written by Chris. A rose in my palm. It's oh. it's written by Christiana Brimstone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a there's a moment where it looks like Tori's gonna end the conversation. You know what I mean? As you're putting the book back, um, but then she just says, "This is a pretty hot one." <laughs> and then goes like back to tidying things uh appropriately for like both of them to have a place to sleep um puts the pillow on the bed and and the whole room is like this is like ma a master bedroom sized room you know what yeah. i mean like it's like yeah. ridiculous um and uh i think she just says uh if you need to borrow something tomorrow, I mean, I think for a similar size, you know, like question mark. Oh, um, that's um, that's perfectly fine. I I actually I I even um you know I couldn't leave without a bag. It would have been oh, obvious that I... great. Yeah. So it's it's fine. Um, well, uh, get comfy then, I guess, and uh, get whatever sleep you can after all that. Thanks for this again. It's okay. We're, I don't know, teammates, friends, I hope. Yeah, uh, friends. And she, like, pulls the blanket back and, you know, gets gets into bed, like, after having, like, changed into some pajamas. And, uh, I think there's, like, one more thing that she says, like, when they're both, like, settling down. Mm. One final uh, quip. Yeah, and, uh, and it's just, uh, You know, we are gonna have to do something about Ashford, right? Repeat. We ha we we're gonna have to do something oh. about Ashford. I mean, he's holding us all to ransom. What that what Ashford is doing is wrong. And there's a sound of agreement, like a, hmm. Yeah, I knew you'd agree. It's, All right. Spoiler, so, I don't really like the guy. <laughs> All right, well, uh, sorry. He's I'll, 
pretty shitty teacher. <laughs> Sorry. Laughter and then, uh, yeah, pretty shitty teacher, that's for sure. And, yeah. uh, night, Cecilia. Night. And we fade on that. And you. everyone goes to sleep in their own time and in their own ways. I, I, <clears throat> I, I just want to, I imagine Will had left, like, bed linens out the window as a way <laughs> to get back in, and then he gets there and he just goes, that is not going to work, and then he just goes in the normal way. Yeah, yeah. Everything's fine, it's just like, he, he, it's, to him, it's a little bit like being in an adventure film, and it's yeah. like, nope, I'm not even going to try that. He tries very hard not to think of himself as just William. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, the night, uh, everyone sleeps and the night goes on. But for one person... Which person? Will. May we? At some point, you find yourself in what can only be, be described as a more lucid dream. Ooh. Um, essentially, you come in the in the strange gray swirl of Will's unconscious mind when he's sleeping, when he's dreaming. You know, there are dreams you have you don't remember. There are dreams you vaguely remember. There's music that that shifts away from you as you try to grasp a bit. Yeah. This is more lucid you're aware of yourself you're aware of your your mind is working and you find yourself in front of what is majorly darkness but okay. you find yourself with hands on bars oh like i'm on the inside or the darkness is jailed in the darkness is all around you the the bars are just in front of you. Oh, okay. And for a moment you're like, am I in jail? Yeah. Or am I looking into a jail? Sneaking out, you've been jail. <laughs> you're, did they catch you're not me? Pasco. Did they catch me? Was I arrested? I'll go down. I'll collect $200. Yeah, exactly. Um, but then, uh, in the darkness behind the bars, you see a kind of, like, s slight red eminence, uh, kind of slowly getting larger as an eye opens. Yeah. Um, it is... Do, do I recognize the eye? <laughs> uh, you haven't... Uh, I don't think you've really seen the eye. Oh, he, uh, yeah, he did. Um, he went and well. looked in a mirror. He went and looked in the mirror quite oh, okay yeah uh, yeah, yeah then no, I, so... I, I will say in that in in that case then yes you do okay and um you kind of smell the smell of like like acrid smoke and and um there's like little embers kind of uh float in between the the bars and you hear Summon me. Free me. Find me. Uh, will have <laughs> having grasped the bars, uh, Will, I think, uh, realizes that He's kind of safe on this side of the bars. So uh, uh, he, uh, oh, I, I want to start say he starts pacing like back and forth, looking through the bars. And uh, 
uh, says, actually, you know, I think we've got a good arrangement. As it stands right now. Fuck yes, Will. <laughs> Damn. You come out when I need you, and rest of the time, you stay on the other side of these. And he kind of taps his knuckle on the bars. We will see about that little man. If you're going to be staying here, and Will kind of looks around a bit and like in here, you might want to work on little diplomacy. And if at all possible, Will will kind of try to get out of the dream and kind yeah. of leave on a um, high note. <laughs> the, 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 like, the more kind of shifting vibe of the dream set settles back in the the consciousness kind of slips back into yeah uh, the unconsciousness and the the kind of ethereal nature of dreams they slip through your fingers you don't remember them all um you will remember vaguely the encounter to a degree um yeah just I, I love the idea of Will just in his bed with a giant smile on his face at this is happening. <laughs> yeah. And cool. um what I will say is we will uh, if everyone is okay with it, uh, we will move past the morning. Essentially Cecilia um for the most part, um, Tori, your dad, has already left by the time you guys are kind of up and about and getting breakfast and that. Um, there is a, a small encounter with the twins before they have to go off to get the bus, but it is mercifully short, and um, it's they're distracted by having to finish their homework quickly in the morning and, and go off to school. So it is the first time they meet Cecilia, it's not really long enough for any type of noted interaction, really. It's just kind of like, oh! It doesn't need to be hello. specific for me either, but they have to finish, you say that they have to finish their homework, like, quickly uh, in the morning. Yeah. Like, I will say, though, no see needed, but Cecilia would help. I think she's, like, okay <laughs> towards kids, so I think she would help. <laughs> Ah, the helpful friend, I, even better than the regular friend. I am. I imagine Tori helps the the twins with their homework in the morning as well, when um, she has to. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can you can kind of join in with that. Um, and <clears throat> essentially, uh, both you can carpool if you want, or both drive separately to to school once it's time to go to school. Um, I mean, I think separately because who knows what we need to do after. Yes, it will be separately. And, uh, Lord, give me a second. Uh, for this, I feel like. Oh no, he's getting something. I feel like the next thing of note to hit on, and we will cover the rest of the day, um, probably in the next episode. Um, but one thing I feel should be talked about. He's getting the glasses. He is. Uh, is your meeting with Mr. Ashford, which I uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like you would actually all gather up at some point during the day, probably the afternoon after lunch, um, and go and talk to him together. Yeah, if not, just like meet at so. his room whenever we normally had a meeting. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a question. Does yes. this school have a school uniform, or is it casual? Casual. Casual. Okay. Um, I, I would say like there there might be a there might there might be an occasional time when there's like a need to dress more smartly. Okay, you know, like but yeah, very rarely. So, and there's no actual uniform. So. 
you walk in, you sit down, Mr. Ashford is there, and he has his briefcase, and he has, uh, you know, same as ever, he lets you sit down and kind of... Is he shocked that we've come by? No. <laughs> I figured not. I figured I'd just ask. George, you want to handle this one? Since you're, you um, know, kind of have it. The gargoyle said hi. Mm. And he'll meet you at a, the mine. His name is Jor Jorakax. Jo so he wasn't choking. Oh my god. How they talk without lips is... So they were actually there then. Yeah. Sick. So, um... He, uh, he and a couple of his friends help me out from time to time when I need a little bit of, um, static recon. Yeah. That's... Those are definitely... I, I'd want them on my side. So I... Uh, the church we went... Did you know what was inside of it? Because I ate it. Oh, um, no, I had no idea what was in it. Uh, what was it? A big blue ball of light and static electricity. Do you know what that is? Because I ate it. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I feel fine. Just like did it um did it try and uh uh kind of take possession of you did it uh... i think it might have at first like it chased cecilia and i clapped at it and then it went after me and then what happened why did i break all that stuff. I mean, I tried to shake you out of it, then it touched me, then I then it left me for some reason. Um, and then you ate it. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Yep. Oh, the black gooey people. Shadow. Can you tell us what that is? Shadows. No, what was the blue light thing, though? Right. Um, salvation kind of uh, it attempts to uh, find people without hope and save them I ate salvation oh my okay uh, at, at this Will will kind of look at George and go oh, you ate one of the good guys it's not really a good guy oh okay good I mean Good, good that you did need a good guy. I mean, I didn't... I still have it. Them. Uh, did you chew? No. Good. You stored it instead of... Consumed yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, alright. That should work fine. Um, and the, uh... It's called The Light. The light. The light was rude. It doesn't have much of a consciousness or ability to communicate. Do you have any suggestions as to what I do with it now? Yeah, um... Just, if you clear the desks out a little bit. Like, right, the desks in the room? Yeah, just make a little circle, a little area. She'll like look around at everybody like, is he serious? Do we get okay? Get up and start shoving everything to the walls, essentially. And he gets up and cracks his knuckles. Neck. Alright. She'll probably mimic him like. Let out. Let it out. I don't oh, it wasn't. Nope, I can do it. <sighs> Just give me a second. She'll just kind of like stare at the floor for a minute and be like, it's got to be the same, the same like oomphy thing she did before to suck it in, but just like puke it out, right? And at that moment, I'm 
if it works, I'm assuming her body probably will do the same, like, bust open, mouth open, just like, the so thing. So, I, I, I would say, <laughs> to begin with, George is like, Ooh. Like, trying to, like, <laughs> trying to, like, blow and... Uh, uh. Uh, and he's like, uh, and Ashford says, no, that's your body that's, that's you just you're trying to blow out air from your lungs <laughs> oh right yeah <clears throat> um feel, so how do i feel the emptiness feel that space inside you and then access it and bring it up okay <laughs> Um, okay, gonna do my best. Just sit there and concentrate real hard and start thinking about just like that effervescent void inside of her that tells her she's always hungry, always empty, mm. always needing something more, and nothing really fills her. Yeah. And uh in her mind, literally like reach for it. Yeah. Kind and of It's there and you you know it enough to be able to access it reasonably easily. Um and once you do, you feel that kind of like the best way to describe it is like storage space, I guess. Yeah. Um, you feel the presence of something a little bit tingly, a little bit kind of like, you know, almost like pins and needles within that mm. space. And then you can feel it kind of like metaphorically, at least being uh, kind of hacked up, uh, brought back up. And then you just go. <laughs> and then it just like this kind of like spindly thin like as it went in coming out uh and it, it kind of like and then into this kind of like ball of light um which immediately <laughs> yeah it, it immediately starts to um uh starts to like a li little strings of of light coming out of it like like spinning around again small like kind of crackles of lightning and uh, Ashford says, wait. And it just smashes into the floor and like flattens. My baby. And he, he, he walks around uh, the desk and he reaches down and picks it up and he takes it over to his desk, opens his briefcase, pulls out this kind of like weird looking kind of uh, um, job ceramic type thing. It, it's not very big. It's kind of um, kind of kind of like that type of size, and just screws the head off it and opens it up. Put, picks up this kind of slightly flattened ball and just drops it in. It, it goes like it goes like shoop, and there's like a, a kind of ceramic clang. Squeeze back on, and then puts it in his briefcase. Closes the briefcase. And walks back around, uh, sits back down and, and says, Good job, everyone. You've saved possibly a couple of people from a fairly gruesome outcome. Well done. It was How almost do we do a, that? It was almost a gruesome outcome for us. But you can handle it as you handled it. Am I wrong? Yeah. I suppose we can. No, we're but like, gonna have I to... gonna... Sorry, sorry, go ahead, Cease. It's fine. You were right with the jar, by the way. So we're gonna have to keep trusting your judgment that we're gonna be able to handle it. I had no idea whether you'd be able to handle that one. I did say investigate and if needed, come back to me. That's true. She's she's just thinking like, oh, so my idea to just go out of a church wasn't nonsensical, but she keeps no. it to herself. She's like, oh. But I do also have reasonably strong belief in your abilities collectively and individually. Yeah, that's... Uh, so I'm not going to have to like eat all the assignments hopefully not some of them are reasonably tough to swallow 
that's it. With any luck, we'll all be able to contribute. I have no doubt you will. I mean, yeah. At least we know we can. After that whole thing, we don't exactly have a lot of time. Bell's gonna ring any second. So, uh... Anything else? Oh, yeah, we're at school. Nothing as of yet. I'll let you know when something new crops up. Don't expect anything for the next couple of days. I have, uh... How down the mines go? I haven't been yet. Ah. I'm going to go uh, up there in a day or two after our friends have had a nice little look around first. Fair enough. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna go. We should all go. Thanks, bye. <laughs> She'll like get up with her bag and kind of like drag Will's arm. <laughs> Yeah, Will, Will is not many. reluctant. <laughs> it just goes along. Steals Will. Yeah. Well, I appreciate Thanks. the work you've done. I appreciate you getting it out of me. Thanks. And everyone leaves? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In that case, there is one other thing that uh, we will touch on. Uh, I want to bring up one thing okay. first. Uh, George uh, will probably notice that Will uh, has, like, not, not from day to day, but from when they first started hanging out to now, Will's, like, appearance has gotten more and more relaxed. So now he, like, Aww. he usually wears a shirt buttoned all the way up, and now he's got, like, a couple of buttons undone, and... It's not tucked oh. in, and it's like, it's it's not that he's becoming sloppy. He's just becoming like more relaxed, more like chilled out. out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I probably wouldn't say anything. No. She would probably uh, notice. Yeah. That you're just like that one button right there isn't done. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like <laughs> he's got button downs on his collar, and those are not done down, and like yeah. Just show his one little seventeen-year-old chest hair, <laughs> little, little belly. Boy, <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, oh uh, the the last thing, um, and I think it'll actually be the last thing for all of you for the day, um, is actually um, a philosophy class. Oh, with a uh, knight? Yes. <laughs> uh, again, uh, a the beginning of the class and everything is uh, not super important, so we're going to cut into a portion of the class uh, mm -hmm. towards the end. And thus we come on we find ourselves at the crux of ethics and morality. Now, does anyone want to hazard a definition or a, a description of morality? Broad strokes. Yes, Cecilia? Um, just what one person thinks is right and wrong, but, like, in their head doesn't mean that it's right or wrong for everyone. It's just what they believe is right and wrong. And how do we form these morals? Where do they come from? People around us? Uh situations around us but mostly authority figures <laughs> governments parents etc yes so 
when it comes to morality, is it good and evil? And he looks around at everyone here. Kind of open the floor. Um, if, uh, if none of you answer, then there is a boy who uh, puts his hand up and, uh, uh, Mr. Ashford says, says, uh, yes, Larry. And the boy says, um, you mean Mr. Knight, right? It's not Mr. Ashford. Sorry, uh, Mr. Knight, yeah. I'm sorry, I was just over there a second ago. I was like, I was like, yep. what? <laughs> Mr. Knight says, oh, uh, sorry, Larry says, um, it is, is it that you can't really have a uh, good or evil when it comes to morality, but m more like a right and wrong? And Mr. Knight kind of, you know, pauses for a second and says, To a degree, yes. Um, morals are formed through society, through culture, through, um, and he kind of nods towards Cecilia, authority figures. It's hard to have a good and evil, those are more judgments on something beyond right and wrong uh, even the concept of right and wrong can change between cultures and can change between <clears throat> uh, between distance and perspective and one person to another it this makes it extremely difficult to pin down what is right and what is wrong especially when we move into subjects with very little knowledge, very little experience. For example, if you were the first person to meet a new alien, uh, if an alien landed on Earth, or if you were out somewhere in space and made contact with a, a new alien race, there would be no precedent for what, how you should interact with them or how you should you know, what morally is right or wrong, you would be operating on purely your own instinct and your own judgment, which is an interesting prospect. It could mean that there is no right or wrong. So if there's no right or wrong, then, then morality doesn't exist? To a certain degree, morality does not exist unless you allow it to exist. If the only thing that constrains your actions is your own morality, then you are imposing upon yourself a set of laws by which you feel you should stick to. If you allow yourself to divert from your own set of laws, you have broken your own morals. There is no mention of good or evil, or even particularly right or wrong. So then what's the point? Because, to a degree, an unrestrained person is capable of doing things that are culturally or legally or um, morally even well uh, let us say uh, maybe more ethically wrong but but who's to say who's out of control or what's what what's right and what's wrong Tori it's all subjective, and by subjective I mean it's based on society. Whoever is in charge gets to say what is morally wrong or right or what have you. The group consciousness. 
Yes. What if... <laughs> George. Now, what happens, Tori, if you find yourself an outsider or outcast to the group consciousness with the ability or power to ignore said demands of, let's say, society? Well, then you're usually uh, vilified in some way. If history has taught us anything, she says, like, realizing she's answering a question in a very smart manner, and it's like, whatever. We're yeah. Just gonna, just gonna, we're just going to keep going. Brush it off. Um, if history has taught us anything, or you create a new social consciousness based around your ability to ignore it. So we find as we delve deeper into morals, into ethics, and into right and wrong, good and evil, that the only real dictation of such concepts are from within. You have to be the best judge you can on what is right and wrong, what is good and evil, and what laws you set for yourself to abide by. The more outside of society, the more isolated you are, the more likely that those rules will be abnormal comparative to the norm. But that's why codified morality exists. Things like uh, the, the, you know, the laws, the constitution. For example, murder being illegal. For example. Except for the government, governmentally sanctioned murder. Like in war. Yeah, I suppose. Which indicates a flexible morality. The ability to break laws given certain specific circumstance. There's always an exception. There is. But it highlights the... weakness of said morals and said laws. Tori's like, there's no answer to that. That's not a question. Like, sure. Guess it does. She stops answering. This is uh, one of the paths down which you can travel um, philosophically to find yourself at the idea of Rejecting systems, rejecting rigid rule structures and laws, because don't tread on me, bro. Because the only thing constraining us is ourselves and our willingness to buy in to said morals, to said structure. Uh, none of this is. Um, in any way wrong or incorrect it again leads back to the idea that we must judge for ourselves but it is worth considering as you travel through philosophy as you examine ideas of morality of good of evil and of all of these things what is right for you and how you are going to approach these things will you set for yourself bendable laws and rules and morals can you change them and does that make the strength of your convictions and your beliefs stronger or weaker Are you willing to compromise on your morals for the sake of something or someone else? So, your assignment for this week 
is to think about that. And he goes on for a little bit longer. <laughs> Class keeps going, yeah. Um, and the... As the class finishes, uh, he says at the end, uh, he calls out, uh, uh, George Cade, uh, Cecilia Grayson, Rebecca Cameron, and Larry Sweet, please stay at the end. We need to discuss your assignments. Uh, the rest of you, uh, have a good, uh, afternoon. And I'll see you um, in a couple of days for carrying on this conversation. And uh, everyone kind of files out. I'm assuming you two stay. The, mm -hmm. the other two mm -hmm. students do as well. Um, and it's very simple. One by one, uh, George, then Rebecca, then Larry, and then Cecilia. He speaks to you. You go over the, the assignment he's giving quickly, and then you leave. Um and for that we will fade out with um cecilia walking up to talk to to talk to him as the last student left and fade back out to out of the classroom to an over um, arcing look at the city and fade away into nothing Did it over already? He scares the shit out of me. <laughs> I swear, man. I, I feel like he's love... brainwashing us in the background. I do love that Knight's class is basically like, just ignore morality. Just do whatever you want. Just, just make your own decisions and, uh, I don't know, tear down society. Uh, I, the laws I like... are garbage. <laughs> I I love to think that even though um like George way back in the beginning told about the whole confrontation and stuff mm. like Knight still the way he gives his classes like Cecilia is still like looking up every time being like this man like how does he <laughs> do it like, <laughs> <it's> like... <laughs> and Will William William is still like like. <laughs> This is way too Kills loosey children. Man. Yeah, like like <laughs> gri gripping his pencil, kind of like this, is, this yeah. makes no sense. It's not codified. Yeah, <laughs> um. pretty much it. Imagine Will just being pissed. Like none of this is on a C SAT. None of this is on a college exam. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> this is an hour of wasted lifetime. <laughs> not wrong. Poor Will. But yeah, good game, friends. Good game. Yeah, um, good that job. Was, that was a fun session. Lots of emotional uh, content there. Oh, yeah. That was super fun, though. That was like deep. I have so many notes, dude. I'm just sitting here trying to re over them and read because I wrote so fast. It's like saw, illegible scribble nonsense. I saw chat shipping the Victoria Cecilia. <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> chat. What do I they, mean, if what anything, they... I feel like they would bond over their, hor like, not horrible parents, but the. You know, their strange the relationships chat. with their parents. Not the smutty romance. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. well, did chat agree on a name? What was it? Vic Victilia? What was the. Victilia? <laughs> what? No, the, it was Vic Tor Torilia of Tor <laughs> Tor Torilia. That was it. It's actually a really Tor pretty Torilia. name. That's, that's a good ship name. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's face it. If. If those two are going to bond over their bizarre relationship with their parents, then all four of you have an in to become like, like yeah. all of you can talk about that basically. Yeah, um, we're about to start a sex cult, y'all. I'm absolutely, <laughs> I'm absolutely here for the Tory George ship. That's my, that's my favorite one. Dude, <laughs> the the drop on us like being childhood friends was yeah that was right. I man. hope, I I hope that was okay. I just yeah like, no, I, I absolutely. Was just I was just straight like, here's a little lore. No, yeah. it makes so much sense because there is a time when kids don't recognize yeah. like that class structure or anything. Like they don't we probably care. had a lot in common. 
when we're both kind of assholes. Well, and also like inviting a whole class to your birthday party is like a thing you yes, do. Yes, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, well, like that kind of. Your stuff. mom would be like, "You can't leave anyone out." Yeah, yeah. When when you said it, I was like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, a hundred percent." That that. Yep. I can that totally makes see so that. much sense. I also think that it ties in really well when it's like George coming to be like, "I'm sorry, I left this creepy dude," you know, like to in your direction, like. That yeah. apology and that co that conversation makes more sense knowing they have history than it does yeah. like, out of the blue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I imagined like when I remember when I approached you in that in that past situation, I imagined like it's not a huge town, and I'm imagining yeah. a lot of us have probably been here our whole life. So yeah. we were like kinder buddies, you mm -hmm. know, like in the tiny toilets together and shit. And then when Hell you grow yeah. up and that weird structure starts and the clicks and stuff, you drift away, but you always have like that. There's always you always know who they are. Exactly. You know, like, yeah. yeah. Um, also, as a very quick little sidebar, um, mm -hmm. the uh, the light was one of the possible paths for you <gasps> that you could have taken. I Figured could that. have swore I remembered that. I literally wrote that down as a note of the beginning. I'm like, I think this might have been one of those things. And if it gets in me, I'm fucked. But that was pretty cool. The scene, like, I literally thought it was going to be like the good angel and the bad angel <laughs> on my shoulders for a while. <laughs> No, the um the the light seeks out those who have lost hope and those who are um feeling like despair and essentially attaches itself, much like how um gluttony did, you know, but in a different way. And um... so, was, so when I was like clapping at it and it was falling Cecilia, basically did it like hesitate, look at me and sense sorrow and was like, sure. So all four of you are reasonably appealing to the light uh the i'm sorry it, it's just true that's lovely um, <laughs> thanks <laughs> it's it's just that uh cecilia was making noise which essentially attracted it to some degree oh and then when i and started... then you started clapping and making noise and then it it basically took in your presence and went yeah okay this is probably the best one yeah uh, and it doesn't have the intelligence or the the awareness to be like oh sorry this this room is already occupied so it basically went zip, zip, and then um it and gluttony were kind of like smashing against each other until yeah. tori touched it and then it was like oh escape from being attacked by inner demon let's call it for the sake of argument and went zip, over to there uh and then yeah essentially once it was semi-attached to tori the same way it was attached to you it was more susceptible to the command, so get out was. Oh shit! So it's like the closer Tori gets, is. Um, kind of. the The thing that made it susceptible was the attempt to connect, opened up like because it, it doesn't really have a communication and language. Yeah. So once it makes that mental connection, it's vulnerable to Tori's command. Man, Tori's powers are a mystery to me still. So. Yeah, me yeah. too. Um, that's that's the great thing about them. I love them. Um, yeah, I just am like baffled. I the thing for me is like how impossible can these commands be, and like like how self destructive. But these are questions for future yeah. role play. Yeah. What about some shout outs, GP? I was about oh, to say, oh, snap. Um, I'm torn between starting with George or Tori today, just because I I made made both of them visit a uh, a dark place in the past. Uh, let's go with Tori, as um you know. Hello, friends. I am I am indeed the person who plays Tori, Distracted Elf. You can find me at Twitch.tv/DistractedElf or on Twitter at DistractedElf. Um, I am making a game. Uh, <gasps> So it's a it's a role, tabletop role playing game actually um, oh. called the the gloom beneath. Uh, it's about dark elf politics in Ooh. the underground cities of a future apocalypse. Oh, um, but uh, yeah, so you know, look that up if you want. I'm it's it's coming. It's on its way. Avoiding um, the new bullshit OGL. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, but it it's it's a blades in the dark game. 
So. Oh, okay. Fortune that okay, cool. That's cool. That sounds dark. like it'd be dope, dude. Yeah. I played a dark yeah. elf in um, Elder Scrolls for many, many, many years. Is that is that your tacit your approval yeah. that if I need a play test, I can? I oh, can hard. Yeah. Right, I volunteer as tribute. All right, sick. We, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get a. We'll get a stream. I, I am we'll, down for we'll, anything that involves blades in the dark. We'll get a anytime. stream game going. We'll get a stream <laughs> game going. I think that'll be fun. Um. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna pass it off to uh Sarx. Oh Sir. My my new friend. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Uh hey, uh for anyone just for anyone thinking, oh wow, that Cecilia is really shitty at making friends. <laughs> um spoiler alert, that's the whole deal. Yeah. yeah. Um <laughs> it is meant spoiler to be that alert. way. <laughs> Kind of the point. Kind of the point. Um, also, hi. What, what good would it be without the drama? Let's be oh, honest. Sure. Word. Yeah, and also, like, it's just, it's that very stereotypical, like, thing of she wants to make friends, but she gets in her own way. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, but hey, now she has one friend. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Syrinx. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, playing uh, this lovely game with y'all. Um, you can find me at Syrinx on Twitter and Instagram as such. Uh, and for now, I'll pass it on to Katie. Hey guys. It ate a blue ball. The blue ball jokes, <laughs> I couldn't, I can't even tell you. There was, it was serious, serious Just self control. Me. I'm going to link you a YouTube video. Oh, please. There, I can't. There, it, there were so many you were backed up. Oh my god. Oh, there god. was like this intense pressure in my Hurry, abdominal Katie, area. Katie, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> intense pressure in my abdominal area. No, it was like, sorry, I'm just rewriting my notes. Um, What a day. I What a freaking wild day. I'm really excited to find out more about everybody's powers. But I mostly like him all about like the Tori, Tori and Cecilia's like spat and then like breaking down and saying I'm sorry to each other. And I just cannot. Like I was very close to just falling my eyes out yeah that was i literally really put nice. my speaker on my desk because i had to pee so bad ran to the bathroom had the bathroom door open like push peed and was listening it was like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh my god though heart-wrenching shit today was really good like it was all over the board like we had like intense like anger and sad and uh action i don't know today was I, really fun anyways I my believe... name's katie oh, sorry i was no. gonna say i believe, I believe. That's this this one but carry on. The song. Oh yes. No, you're totally fine. Um, my name is Class Katie. It was wonderful to play with these beautiful people today and to hang out with y'all. Um I'm playing Boyfriend Dungeon still because it's one of those games that never ends. I guess. So we're still going. Feel free to swing by. Don't forget the Patreon here though, because we don't get a season three of Dragon Riders if you don't. And I will come for you. I have a legal license to do these things in certain states. Oh, oh shit! She is legal. She is a legal license to unplug you. <laughs> Patreon, my dudes. LZT, go. Hi, I'm LZT. You can <laughs> find me everywhere at Lima Zulu Tango. If there is no Lima Zulu Tango, I'm not there. Uh, yeah, no, I just w wanted to because we we're talking about blades in the dark, and I'm I. Any chance I get, I will play Blades in the Dark, and I would love it if we did a Blades in the Dark campaign on the Wandering Inn. But I really want to watch you play. play with Blades in the Dark. I have an idea for Blades in the Dark. I would. I have, I have about six. Mm, yeah. Spoiler: <laughs> Sheepy won't use the system. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the problem, though. Is people are like, yeah. I'd love Spoiler, to see Sheepy, Sheepy do Sheepy won't play the freaking game, so it doesn't really matter. Sheepy plays yeah. his own game. <laughs> yeah. I, I I would love to play a Blades in the Dark campaign that's actually Blades in the Dark. Let's let, let me let me phrase it that way. GP gets uh, out all the toys to play various systems and then just like ignores them. Basically. Yeah. We should just uh, get John as a as a guest DM and have him run a one shot or like a a short campaign. That would be pretty cool. I'm always uh, looking for for GMs. Yeah, and I actually have him right uh, here, Sheepy. Yeah, and and I have another guy that uh, has been talking about running a, a short game, and I was like, "Hey, you should talk to this guy." So uh, we'll see if uh, see if he uh, makes his mind up, and then I'll link yeah. you two together. Uh, yeah, check out the Patreon because without it, none of this is a thing. 
and the people watching on YouTube. Appreciate you. Extra shout out to the people watching on YouTube. And Thank uh, you, YouTube. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out, guys. See you in a week. Woo! Bye. Back to Shippy. <laughs> LZT just finishes the stream. Bye! Yeah! I'm gonna going to hijack your now. Um, Dex and... What could I say that hasn't been said aside from Mr. Matt? I look forward to your comment on this video. <laughs> <laughs> the poor, website! Poor guy, poor guy. Um, yeah, thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, Patron is the only thing that's super important right now. If you enjoy what we do, if you'd like to see us do more and, you know, you'd like to see more shows, uh, guest GMs, um, experimental shits, new GMs, like all that kind of stuff, uh, go check out the Patreon. We are slowly creeping towards the goal of funding a Friday show, which will mean two shows a week. Uh, I, d I don't want to be running two shows and paying out of pocket yeah a vast amount like set in stone so every now and then i'll do an extra show you know i may be doing an extra show right now it's recorded um it's alien and it's going to be very interesting um have you guys officially announced anything about that yet my stream has asked me so many times and i'm like i gotta plead the fifth uh know. yeah a little bit um okay. i think that it's happening yeah that it's happening that there are two gms that there's a dual perspective in the same setting a couple of weeks apart uh and that there are two casts as well so yes um so yeah uh if you want to set in stone shows a week uh check out the patron pledge a little pledge whatever you feel comfortable with don't get super impulsive don't be like three hundred thousand pounds although i could or do, do it do I could, it i could do an interesting show with three hundred thousand pounds i'm just saying elf said but... to you have to now <laughs> um give it ah. aside from all of that um thank you for watching very much uh we will be back in a week and i believe that next week there won't normal be time. normal it's normal time yeah, no, yep. yeah. so we don't have to worry about that and yeah um looking we forward to catch up to, looking forward to that thanks for watching and see you then Bye. Bye.